What's going on? I am Nando. And I am DJ. And I'm Diggins. And this is Mostly Nitpicking, a podcast where every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Woohoo! Woohoo! Usually, the pop culture is, you know what, it's stuff that I'm not not looking forward to, but I'm like, okay, we're going to watch Jungle Cruise, you know? That's probably fine. Finally, we have a pop culture that I liked, and I don't even, I'm not even going to beat around the bush here. It, it was a treat. Finally, you guys, a good pop culture. Um, we got it. We got a good pop culture. We How got long one. did it take us? Because it was been a while since last good, co- I mean, uh, good pop culture. It depends on Fanine, I guess, as like, that That one was like, you know, debatable. What was, the, um, what was the last thing that all three of us liked? Oh my gosh. I mean, Diggins, what did, I guess I didn't one. love Fanine either. We did Jungle Cruise as a no. Not like a no. I guess we all were like, it's, it's, a, okay. it's okay. Yeah. It's a fine. Snake yeah. Eyes was a no. Foot Nine, I do think, was a no. I think there's something else that happened between those two episodes. Black, well, Widow, Black Widow. Black was... Widow was like, okay. You know, I wouldn't say that was like a, wow, I love this movie movie. But it was like, Godzilla was like something. Remember Godzilla? That was this year. Oh my god, that was this year? Jeez. Right? That was this like, year. Yeah. Like, there was like Raya, it's like, okay, Milan, not great. Yeah. Wonder Woman, not great. I mean, like, I, I did really like Luca. Like, that's probably top, my top five, you know, easily favorite movies of this year so far. And I watched Luca over the weekend. I wasn't going to wreck it because it's already been done. And Luca is amazing. Yeah, like it's like, really it's, solid. And it's a shame we didn't do it. We probably would have been like really happy if we yeah. did it. Yeah, I feel well, that's like why it's we a, didn't do it, DJ. We we have to suffer. Well, it, did you watch it, Diggins? I've watched oh, yeah. it. Yes. Oh, okay. So very solid movie. I as always late to the party. This is consistently late. You know, DJ, it's not a big, not a big Disney guy. You know, me and Dick is yeah, real true. Disney fans. Yeah. Um, let me see. I'm gonna open up our Spotify page right now. Let me see what we got. Uh, you know, Jungle Cruise, Snake Eyes, Space Jam, Woof, uh, Tomorrow War, Woof, Fate of the Furious, for Seven, Cruella, Army of the Dead. Yeah, I'm like, geez, Mortal Kombat, Godzilla. I'm looking at just newer things like. Con, no, like uh, Zack Snyder, Justice League, Raya, Willy's Wonderland, like oh my god, Willy's Wonderland, <laughs> yeah, like and then we're we're already in last year, so we got Wonder Woman, Tenet, so it has been New amazing. Mutants, <laughs> The Witches, man, <laughs> Christmas Chronicles <laughs> Two, is this why we're upset all the time? I mean, it, it ain't helping. Like I think it makes sense. All the movie studios have been hiding the good movies because they think they can sell them to us instead of just give them. Uh, that makes <laughs> complete sense. Um, big, on, yeah, like I think the last ooh, Bloodshot, Money Plane, Quibby, Quibby. I think we could all agree <laughs> that uh, last time yes. I felt true joy. Yeah, Scoop, Extraction, The Hunt, <laughs> Trolls. <laughs> like wow, how far back am I going? Onward, onwards. Okay, Invisible Man. I think we were all like Invisible Man is pretty good. Like yeah. Like That's like a, man, I think. above average. Sonic, I think I didn't hate that. Honestly, I don't remember how we all felt about this. Birds of Prey, I quite liked. And Same. That was, that was about a year ago, you know, like a year and a half ago. So, you know, every so often, you put Harley Quinn in a movie that's less like the first one. And then we'll probably all <laughs> like that movie. Put Harley um, Quinn in a movie where Jared Leto doesn't show up. Yeah. Thank God. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if he was in this? Spoiler alert for Suicide, the Suicide Squad. He's not in it. He does not show up at the end. Thank God. Which, like, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just, like, threaten to give one of them a reach around or something. King Shark. <laughs> give you a reach around. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon Man, you look like a man who enjoys a reach around. We're going to need a bigger reach around. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah, <laughs> and then Harley I, Quinn says, "I'm gonna fucking kill ya." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I I do think yeah. So we're talking about the Suicide Squad. James Gunn's the Suicide Squad. If fucking Zack Snyder gets his name on the Zack Snyder's Justice League, I think we should definitely real? like. I maybe we should do this with all of them because I do think all of them, all of the DC movies, hmm, DC EU movies. Do you have a director attached? I'm like, oh yeah. James Wan Aquaman. 
oh yeah, David F. Sandberg Shazam. Like their their directors do shine through for better or for worse, except for like David Ayer when they just don't oh. use his movie. But David Ayer. Yeah. Um, he he like down the memory hole with him. He tried to get back in the discourse this week where like oh, I had a movie and it was away and Warner Brothers ruined me. Mm. I'm like, sorry, sir, did you have damage written on the Joker's forehead in your movie, too? Okay. <laughs> it probably wasn't going to be that great. <laughs> like, yeah, the might thing have been about, better. The thing about the David Ayer version is it was also bad, and that's why they changed it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just kind of maybe boring. I don't know what to tell you, David. I appreciate the idea that you should be able to show everybody the movie you made, but also, I don't know, man, you put Harley Quinn in the booty shorts, so you, you, you make King Shark watch, like, BET, probably. All the things that I remember <laughs> about the new movie is that, like, about Suicide Squad, was that they just edited it a lot. Like, I don't think there were as many reshoots as you'd expect. Um, although I yeah, guess they most, could have just had him. They're mostly working with his raw materials. They gave it to that trailer company to make, like, big, splashy intros for. That was about it. Yeah. I mean, maybe they maybe they had, like, King Shark or uh, Killer Croc watching Masterpiece Theater and just, like, <laughs> vibing out to it. And they're like, nah, you know it would be funnier instead? <laughs> B E T, yeah. Um, who knows? But we're talking about the Suicide Squad, you guys. Real quick, couple things right off the top. We have some good names yeah. for IMDb, which I'll get to eventually. Um, I also want to say I don't know if we've definitively heard this from everybody, but I do think the consensus is it is slightly more plausible that you can do the breathe in the mouth thing than we may have suggested. We because of CPR and just like the amount of CO two. That you breathe out and stuff. It wouldn't be great, but it might be able to work. Be tough. If I recall, my objection was mainly that it would be very difficult to do that without getting water in your mouth. Yeah, Uh, like the tightest of seals is what you would need. And And I guess lips are a watertight seal. If you close your mouth, water doesn't get in. And James Gunn, or James Gunn, geez. Um, You know, The Rock, the James Gunn of acting, has a watertight, (laughs) strong mouth, we all know. So, you know, he could... He can do it. It's all it's all up to Emily Blunt at that point. Um, and she, you know, she's probably got she she could you know be so quiet that she gives birth and the monsters don't hear her. So <laughs> that is true. Pretty <laughs> that, yeah, solid. That does happen. Yeah, mouth closing abilities. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, other thing though. Um, and thank you everybody that that wrote in. Uh, lots and lots of people. I, I always appreciate it. Um, and. Uh, and and we'll get to the IMDb ones. Um, real quick, I want to say DJ definitely for you, but also Diggins probably. Yeah. What was what? What's your thing? No, no, no. I'm just like agreeing with you. Like, yeah. You don't even know what I'm gonna say. This is gonna be a thing. For I know what you're gonna say. I know exactly what you're gonna say. What am I gonna say? I read the tweets. No, no, different thing. Different thing. Oh, apologies. I want to give a little shout out to my boy yeah. Faber. Uh, the best of the Jeopardy hosts. I think we can all agree. Get uh, okay. snobbed for Mike Richards. I was going to say, is, uh, I, th- I think you'll find that Mike Richards was the best one. That's why they hired him. <laughs> yeah. you know? I, I mean, to be fair, I've watched all of them. I have, I have been keeping up with Jeopardy recently. Mike Richards is pretty good. He's hosted game shows before. He's got that in his blood. Like, he's, he's you know, he's got that calmness to him. But I, I think the Faber dude was just more, like, he had a, he had a little bit more charm, you know? Okay. What do you think, DJ? Who did you want to be? The, did you have a Jeopardy host in mind? Like, I feel like Aaron Rodgers. He wasn't that great, though. I, I don't think he felt... I don't think as an audition, he proved himself. Oh, really? I, 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 I would love for him to be Jeopardy host, but he just didn't have the, like, calmness that I think you want from a Jeopardy host. And, and I heard a lot of people talk about this online, so, like, you know... There's, there's a lot of discourse, but he also, like, almost, like, draws focus from the guests, and I think you want a Jeopardy host that can kind of fade into the background, and then just pop up, pops a head up. Interesting. But, yeah, I do think Aaron Rodgers is pretty good, better than you'd expect, but he's probably not going to do it full time. Um, yeah, he's got that whole football job that he's still allegedly doing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I assumed you would have an opinion on this. Diggins, what about you? Do you have an opinion on Jeopardy? I think it should have been Dick Cheney. <laughs> Was he in the running? I think it should Did have I been. That? I think it should have been. What's his name? K- Christian Bale and Dick Cheney makeup. Because then he could be <laughs> oh, Dick Cheney yeah. forever. You know. That's true. That's true. And it never age. You just change like change out the makeup every so often. <laughs> 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 that would be so great. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, Dick Cheney would be a great Jeopardy host. 
Because it'd be funny to watch him be like, no, next. <laughs> like, That's whenever wrong. someone gets one wrong. Yeah. Idiot, no. It's France. France is the answer. Uh, I feel like a lot no, of people yeah, I, I, I did not, I didn't mind. And then every, every time they could just have clues that are like, uh, uh, this person is a war criminal. And people could be like, who is Dick Cheney? Yeah. And he'd be I'm like, yes. <laughs> but also, who cares? <laughs> Donald Trump's worse. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we well, did like Beavis and Butthead. Oh yeah, it's like the Penguin. It was always how John Stewart played him on the show, and I feel like that right. has seeped into my brain. Um, I actually think uh, the Penguin would be a great uh, Jeopardy host, or John Stewart. I think either of them would be great. John Stewart would be an interesting Jeopardy host because he's a smart guy, but he's also a dumb guy. You know, like I kind of like that yeah. in my Jeopardy host, and that's what Lavar Burton had, but he was just a little too much with it. But but like if you were like if you're like the uh, answer is Russia, and he was like. I guess it is. Okay. Next. Like that that's a that's a fun uh energy. Penguin would be fun, except he'd be too small. They'd have to give him a really small podium, you know. Which would be like hilarious. Or he could but stand on a little stool. Yeah. A barrel of fish. Colin Farrell's gonna be a tall penguin. I don't know if we're ready for that, you know. The world's not ready for a tall penguin. Yeah, we yeah, already the got tall. Not ready for that movie. It's never coming out. Ugh, I oh, don't even I mean it's the next D C movie. It is uh, the slate is you know, it's on the on deck circle, but but we'll see. Speaking of movies, you guys. Yeah. We got a movie coming up in a year All or whatever. Right. That's going to be something else, isn't it? Because we got I a casting so. announcement today. We all got fisted on Twitter. There was a fist. We also have one whole <laughs> fist. <laughs> this uh, was yesterday, Nando. This was not today to further oh, more yeah, accurately sorry. date the recording session. Good point. Uh, Diggins, do you want to explain this one since you are th- you were living it yesterday? <laughs> that's true. Yesterday, uh, I was uh, streaming, actually. I was playing Sonic and Knuckles. A classic really? Sonic game oh, for the Sega Genesis. What are the odds? <laughs> um, when somebody in chat uh, told me who got cast as Knuckles in the Sonic movie, and I was like, "That's a lie! You're lying to me. <laughs> this is a joke <laughs> you're telling." <laughs> uh, and it took several reiterations that I was not being clowned on for me to accept that it was the reality we are now living in, where. Uh, a certain Mr. Idris Elba, knock knock, he's Knuckles. Yep. Do you guys like that casting? Whatever. It doesn't matter. I can't even picture Idris Elba's n- voice coming out of Knuckles' mouth. Oi, I got a god the Master Emerald, mate. Wait, wow, no, that, that was no. that, that was, was Jai Courtney. Yeah, um, yeah. Listen, uh, you, uh, during that was my like stream, Rocco's I, modern I, life. <laughs> During my stream, I was forced to try and do Idris Elba as Knuckles, uh, and I did a horrendous job, but every single attempt I made was better than that. I did it well before the recording, Mm. Diggins. Like, we did Mm. it before Nando got on, and I thought I did a good job. We'll try again. We'll give you another shot. We'll all do our Knuckles. All right. Idris Elba as Knuckles, obviously. Someone go first. Someone has to go first. What are are some things Knuckles says? Stuff about Chaos Emeralds. I'll I'll go first. You can look it up while I go. All right. Hey, bruv. Some call me Knuckles. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. I'd rather flex hmm. me muscles. That's, uh, that's not bad. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, oi, bruv. Look at that. Look, oh, fuck, now, teacher got it into me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amanda Waller, you've, you've got too many <laughs> chaos emeralds. I More like Amanda I, I can't Wallaby, do am I right? <laughs> Oh, very <laughs> good. Yeah. I, I, I truly ruined everything. Uh, oh, I bro, I got to call the Master ma, ma, I, yeah, <laughs> master Emerald. I, Why can't I you guys it. not do I, not Australian? My, Michael Kine. I'm Michael Kine, and it's Michael Kine. I'm, I'm, I'm Idris Elbra, and I, I, I'm going to Master Emerald. Um, so Michael Kane, you did a pretty good job there. Yeah. I wonder if Adam Driver can do a good, better, better impression. That's what I hear. Uh, well, Who's well, you know, if, uh, I, I happen to be <gasps> listening in, and I uh, uh-huh. guess I'll give it a shot. Um, do it. Mm. Oi, bruv. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, I, the Master Emerald allows me to feel. Oh, very good. Uh, how was, yeah, how I mean, was that, Nando? I, I feel like Diggins is original one where he started, not the one that I didn't hear before, or DJ's one that I didn't hear before because I wasn't on. <laughs> Diggins is one that he did on the pod. Probably the best. I'd say Adam, close second. Nando, third. Thank you. Nah. Nando uh, could be the I, last. D- 
DJ's I am one. going to what? jump back out of DJ's window now. Uh, oh, yeah, have, right. That's uh, how you do it. things to be doing. So I, I'll see you what, do you, what are you up to, Adam? Uh, you I'm do a filming. Disney Plus show about Kylo Ren? Uh, I am doing a Disney Plus show, but it's secretly not about Kylo Ren. It's actually about... Ooh. Uh, it's about a clone of Snoke uh, living a life uh, after the fall of the New Order. Uh, And he is joining the Galactic Senate. Oh, are you going to play your lifeless body just laying there? Uh, Did they take your body home? No, uh, it was just (laughs) left to uh, dissolve on the planet. So every once in a while, we cut back to my body. and I So I have to be on set to be filmed as a lifeless corpse. Because we do it from a different angle every time. God, what a disaster. Well, that sounds like fun. Uh, It's good to talk to you, Adam. It was good to speak with both of you uh, again as well. Uh, But uh, like I said, I have to jump out of the window now. So I will see you all later. Excellent. And what oh. about Michael Kind? How did Michael Kind? Michael Kind, I think you did better than DJ and me. So I would just say you're third out of the five. So right in the middle, which is not bad. Oh, oh thank you. I have to go film Tenet 2. Ooh. Oh. Which one of the letters is a two? The E or the N? Is it like a Bo- <laughs> upside down Bo- N or something? Both both T's. Both T's. <gasps> two new t- <laughs> Two <laughs> 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 or something. Tutu? I don't know. It sounds awesome. That's great. What if it was called, instead of Tenet, it was called Eleven It? That would be pretty good. <laughs> it's the Ocean's naming convention. Uh, you guys, we gotta talk about a movie. Yeah? It's about a squad sure? of guys. I don't know. Do we have to? We don't have to do anything. That's true. Um, well, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. I would like to, because then we could say nice things instead of talking about Knuckles. As far as Knuckles is concerned, here's my question about Knuckles. Yeah. Does he... All right. In this movie, we're going to get Tails too, right? Uh-huh. You want Tails to be voiced by a new guy, or do you give Tails to the actual voice actor? Because in the actual... Who did the voice in the in the movie? Like the little... I have no idea. Tease voice. It was, was the, it, the... it was the video game voice actor in the little post credit okay. scene. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if they'll get, like, Michael Sarah or something to do that. <laughs> Tails oh, is a God. boy, right? Yes. Tails is a boy. Tails yes. is a boy? Okay. Yeah. So... Yeah, it'll probably be Michael Sarah. which is a bummer. Because <laughs> I, I like the idea of giving the voice actors a chance to voice act, you know? Yeah. Good well, at it. Yeah. They, they, it's it's only job happened, after all. It's only happened <gasps> once ever. Wait, what if Amy's in it and she's Zendaya? Can we give Zendaya another shot? Oh, God. I think she could do it. And Don Cheadle can be Tails. <laughs> the whole Toon Squad back. Do, no, Don Cheadle's Big the Cat. Oh, yeah. He'd be so good. Hold on. Don Cheadle would actually be a pretty fun shadow. <laughs> I would actually oh like to see God. him, like, be a, you know, 2000s edgelord, you know, character. Uh, my real question is, is Sonic going to kiss a human girl in this movie? <laughs> God, I, I hope not. so. Yeah, I think we got to, we're moving towards it. It's happening. He flossed, he farted, now he has to kiss a human girl. <laughs> it's it's, it's crazy. the logical I, progression. Yeah. Because that movie came out, I don't know, 15 years ago, I have, like, no memory of it whatsoever. It just, like, totally blank in my head. Jim Carrey did good dance. Yeah. He did do good dance, and he had good mustache at the end, I believe. He I did. Yeah, correctly. he looked like mm-hmm. Eggman for a second. And he had, like, a um, guy that worked for him that he threw coffee at or something. I don't know. Oh, I also remember the Olive Garden. Yeah, that I remember I, a lot. I remember that being very important. And Zillow, right? Because when was you're the other there, one, like family. Two weird Zillow. ads. Yeah. 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 Speaking of family, you guys, we're going to talk about a, a unconventional family, if you ask me. Okay. You know, a found family. Um, okay. Nobody says formal... that in this movie. No, they do not. Thank God. They fucking should. In a movie called The Suicide Squad, you guys. Wow, what a movie. Directed by James Gunn. Written by James Gunn. Like all movies should be, instead of written by 50 people. Did you think that might be one of the defining features of this list? Like, we've seen a lot of movies written by committee. Uh, do we haven't loved... With like six writers, mm-hmm. I'm not saying you last... need to get one writer, but having one writer is nice. I think the last few yeah, movies we've vision. even made a point of pointing out how many writers they all had. Yeah, like it's pretty insane. Uh, but we got the Suicide Squad guys with a the, so you know it's better. It's like the Batman and the what are, what other ones do they have? Who else does the this? Predator? The, the movie everybody the Predator, loved. The Fast and the Furious, the first one or no, the second one? Wait, I don't remember. The Fast and the Furious is the first one. 
Okay. Fast and Furious is the fourth one. Okay. Yeah. So they they messed it up, but uh, yeah, they we made a movie. You guys, we got a movie. We saw it on HBO. We saw it in theaters. We are going to play the IMDb game. Real fun. Uh, now we have some names for it. We got a lot of suggestions this past week. Some really really good. Some pretty good. Um, I'm gonna some go down dog the line. Shit. I mean, probably, <laughs> but all overall, I think they're mostly good. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, so we got. Oh, uh, by the way, someone asked if we're gonna do the NFL Eliminator Challenge. Are we gonna do that? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. cool. I will set it up. Probably, I'll, I'll have the info for the next podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, we got. Here we go. Some we got Trev Bot on Twitter. I am brief. Not bad. That's not uh, bad. We got Mexican Schnitzel. The IMD battle, not bad. Uh, not bad. Public University Lois, IMD best. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone else said that one. Come on, Slowpoke said that. Um, uh, Peter on Twitter uh, he humbly requests that when the next James Bond movie comes out, we call the podcast No Time to Lie MDB, um, which I think okay. maybe he meant Die MDB. Die MDB. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we could call it that every time. Um, no time to I am die B. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Roger on Twitter said mostly summarizing or mad narrative status or time to get summarized like Chris Stuckman. Um, also, someone pointed out Expedition Everest is actually the Yeti one. Uh, I, I got that wrong. Oh, what um, were we saying? I said it was Matterhorn, but it's it's the other one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Zach said, what could it IMDB? That's not bad. Um, that one's pretty solid. Uh, I am debate from David. Uh, that might be it. I think those are all of them. Um, except for the one that's my favorite, which is just the I am DB B E E like spell it B. Uh, I think that's pretty good because <laughs> uh, that's what this is. And also wait, I want to yeah. call it that every time. I am so guys, DB are, movie. Are you guys ready for the I am DB B E E like spelling B? You're going to say that That's, out loud yeah, every, every time? time. Every single but time. But, like, <laughs> why not just say uh, Nando and DJ or Dickens and DJ gets the IMDb movie summary? Because uh, I feel like that's as long. Like, just say the IMDb B. Wait. People will know, right? IMDb Well, so. But B-E-E like spelling B. On one hand. No, I'm kidding. I love it now. I no, like it I, because it will make it sound like we're. Idiots, which people like on podcasts. That's that's, <laughs> that's part true. of it. You know, yeah. we sound like your friends. Also, um, we have to play to through our natural strengths. Yeah, exactly. That's another also great point. So, guys, uh, ready for the IMDb? B E like spelling B. I have a summary on IMDb, the website. Uh, mm-hmm. It's pretty good. I'll be honest. It, okay. And it's it's written like uh, it's written like someone who actually wrote the movie. So, like James Gunn, I guess, may have written this. So, like, it's got a lot of character in terms of the word. So, I think it's going to be an easy... Wow, you're giving us a lot of help. I know, but, like, I, I don't I don't think it's enough uh, to, like, nail it. But it's going to be an easy choice for me, I think. Let me read it once myself. Okay. Out loud? Out loud? Yep, here we go. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, please. A film that takes place after the event. No. Uh... <laughs> Of Suicide Squad? Now, Question of, mark? Yeah. <laughs> of some of these movies, depending on <laughs> what the Flash wants in his movie. Um, okay. All right. Uh, who goes first? Uh, I believe I get to pick because I lost last week. Perfect. Uh, DJ, would you like to go first or would you like to defer? I feel like I always shoot myself in the foot by deferring, but I really feel like I could just do dig into this but make it better. Yeah, you could. That's totally what the uh, rules. This is going to, like, kick me in the butt, but I'm going to defer to Diggins. All right, Diggins, go crazy. Don't mind if I do. Um, All right. Okay. Give me one second. Take your time. Um, a, uh, a group of super-powered criminals uh, are, sent to, uh, are sent on a covert operation. Uh to reduce their sentence where they've got to use their uh, unusual powers uh, to stop a uh, an unexpected deadly threat. Okay. DJ, what about you? Okay. Um, a group of... 
A group of criminals coerced into teaming up, led by the mercenary blood sport, must travel into enemy territory in order to stop a supernatural being <laughs> from potentially destroying the world um, with a supernatural element. No, just kidding. yeah, <laughs> can't hurt. You never know. Um, yeah. Is that the end? Yeah. Okay, I am going to give it to DJ. Uh, yes! I honestly don't think either of you were, were very close. There were a lot of words. Oh, God. Neither of you got, but I'm a DJ got a couple. Uh, real quick, since it, since you were both so far off, um, I, I do want to do one of the toss-up word thingies. I There's like ten of them here that if you had really? said one of these, I'd be like, that's probably good. Um Really? Yeah, I'll say you know what. There's three. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I've got three words here. Hmm. Um, if 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 either of you say this, these words, then I will give it to that person because this is what it's close enough. I I think DJ like Hmm. you'll you'll see why, but I don't think you won by very much. All right. And I don't think either you'll get this. Uh, DJ, you can go first. I'll say evil. Nah. Diggins. Gory. Nope. DJ. Renegade. Nope. Diggins. Mm. Splatterfest. No. (laughs) DJ. That's a great word. If that wasn't there, I'd absolutely give it to Dickens. Um, da, 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 I want to say like like Liberty or something. Nope, Dickens. Wacky. No, you were close though with that one. Uh, you were almost there, but you weren't quite there. All right, here we go. And DJ tells win. Um, because DJ Yay. said the name of one of them. Here we go. Ha ha! <laughs> Super villains: Harley Fair Quinn, enough. Bloodsport, Peacemaker, and a collection of nutty cons at Bell Rev Prison. Join uh, the nutty. super secret. Yeah, Nutty was one of them. Join the super secret, super shady Task Force X as they are dropped off at the uh, remote enemy infused island of Cordo Maltese. So, like, if yeah, either of you like had a really said. That's a good summary. Yeah, if either of you had said Task Force X, Cordo Maltese, Bell Rev Prison, Peacemaker Harley Quinn, like DJ said Bloodsport, DJ also said Remote or something like that, Enemy, Enemy yeah. something. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think that's a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid explanation of what happens in this movie. It really is. Yeah, didn't even have to mention the supernatural element. It doesn't really exist, but still, is any character supernatural? Uh, Polka Dot Man, right? Well, he's like a space virus, right? So that's like a I interdimensional virus. Yeah, I'm thinking supernatural, like magic, like like Wiggly Lady from the first Suicide exactly, Squad. Exactly. Yeah, or even like Inferno or whatever his name was. The the guy who was on fire, who was like possessed by a demon, like stuff like that. A lot of the su- a lot of supernatural stuff in the first Suicide Squad, huh? Yeah, I guess I guess Nanawe was described as potentially a shark god, but that was uh, unconfirmed. And then I would say maybe um uh who was the other one uh TDK. I would say it's supernatural, but it's like what is this deal? He could he could be right. he could have a spell. I'm not sure what that character's deal is in the comics. I think he's just that. Like that's just what he is. Um, so. Great stuff. Oh, and I... Oh, mm, yeah. I'd say that's it. Um, you guys, what a terrific... What a terrific movie. And I will let DJ say that first, and then Diggins, and then me. <laughs> All right. Um, so, it was a terrific movie, and... Um I, I thought it was done very well technically. I thought it was very funny. I thought it was gory that I liked. None of that's what I want to talk about because I think we're going to talk about it like throughout the podcast. And you guys are probably going to echo all of my points. I want to talk about, since I get to go first, if we could take a slight aside, I would like to talk about my theater going experience. If that's okay, I, with you I guys. can't wait. Let's let's hear. It. All right, All DJ's right. witch's now, curse corner. This is now. I had a, a quick question to Diggins before. If that the witch's curse, it was like it's a bad crowd, or if it could be anything, and he seemed to say that it's like anything. It's it's just anything that dampens the experience is what's. Yeah, I would say it's probably closer to a crowd being bad than like a projector. Um, or something. It's a, it's just a curse, because... guys. It can manifest in many ways. I, see, okay, here's my thing with the witch's curse. I think the witch's curse, um, I don't know, why Why isn't it the projector? I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe it can be anything. I feel like my real problem, when a projector doesn't work, I'm like, ugh, technology broke, whatever. But when the people are allowed, then I'm like, this could be better. Like, we could have better behavior. Well, and then, okay, so the witch has in, influenced them. All right, well, I will explain. Because I, I do think that falls into that, but the behavior is not the... 
uh, the movie goer. So let me get into it. So I went to a Thursday 7 o'clock showing. By the way, love that the, the before day showings, I don't have to go at midnight like in the olden days. Like when we had to go see the first Avengers at midnight on a Thursday. Yeah, you but we were, in, we were in college I, then, so we didn't we? care. I don't think yeah. we did. I thought we did. We totally I want to say did. we finished, like we had like the art thingy that day, and then we just all walked right to Avengers when it ended, like with our alcohol in hand. Oh. I, I, I think this shift happened between Thor and Captain America. Like, okay. I, I do think there was a point where they went, you know what, let's just do these earlier. Uh, yeah, we, but there was a time. Which is bad. Absolutely. We definitely went to a midnight release for Skyfall. I remember that. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if it was a studio by studio thing. Like, Marvel was just like, fuck it, we'll do them whenever. They also, like, released the movies in Australia early. Like, they did all kinds of weird stuff. Like, England got Captain America before we did or something. And we were like, I remember that. That's an outrage. Yeah. It's Captain get it, America. Get it together. You got your own England Captain America now. And she's fine. Like, you get her early if you want, but we get America Captain America yeah. early. Um, so, well, anyway, it was great be- being able to do that. That Go to the Thursday 7 o'clock show. Agreed. So, I go to that. And the crowd was amazing. It was a full crowd. Everyone, like, reacted at the right time. There wasn't a lot of, like, snack. Like, everyone, like, at once opened their snacks, like, during the trailers. It was like we all had agreed that we were going to be good people. Someone held the door for me on the way in. It was great. I'm watching the movie, and I'm like, is the movie, like, a little bit zoomed in? Oh, no. Or am I just, like, being an idiot right now? Guys, the projector for the entire movie was at, like, 1.25 zoom. Oh, my God. Like, so when, when it was <laughs> the, suic- the Suicide Squad, like, the top part of the THE was cut off. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Um, and, like, Waller's head was cut off during her intro scene. The the subtitles, I couldn't read any subtitles if they were completely on the bottom, which sometimes they were. Yep. Um, Wait, but, like, like in the, the, was this not fixed at any point? No, it was never fixed. It was never, ever fixed. It was like that the entire movie. Did you guys tell them Where, it was broken? Um. Well, so, like, I was, so, all right, I, I don't know if you guys blame me at all here, but the way the theater I was in, it's theater all the way at the end, and I didn't want to miss any of it, so I just kind of let it go. Because oh. I'm like, this isn't, like, the worst thing ever. It was, like, it was like annoying, but fine. But then, all right, so it's, like, cherry on top. It's where it got, like, really bad. At the end of the movie, during the climactic fight, which I'm sure we'll talk about, um, the, like, proje- like the, the lights for the theater came on. Because I'm okay, guessing this was the, fir- the first... Uh, <laughs> so- I- <laughs> sorry, I, you kind of went the, out The witch summoned the me. lights on. Oh, sorry. Um, so, yeah, oh my the, God. the lights... What? The the thing you said. Oh, okay. Um so the lights came on and I assume because it it was this was the first movie in the theater, so it was programmed for whatever movie was in here last, which was shorter. Uh. So for like the last like fifteen minutes of climactic fight, it's with the lights on. Wow. And thank goodness it was a, it's like a daytime scene. Because if it was a nighttime scene, then it would have been like totally over. I would have been like, This is terrible. Because when they did the flashback with uh Mr. Taiko Atiti, mm. I was like, this is awful. Everything's washed out right now. And yeah, that was my fucking movie going experience. I was did so you, pissed. Did you get so your money pissed. back? Honestly, I think at that point you can get a free ticket. I, I stubs. I, there is no money back. Yeah, it's, you already get a free all... ticket. Well, Email. Yeah. Give you another one? Yeah, I'd be like, yo, stubs. I, this movie theater was a disaster. I want a free month. They'll give it to you. They'll do really? whatever you want. Maybe, maybe yeah. I, all right. I'm, I would I'm try it. Then. I would give it a yeah. shot because that sucks. Honestly, I do yeah. think at a certain point it's a little bit your responsibility to like. Well, n- not the lights on at the climax. No, of the movie. not that. Like, one. come on, that's like. I mean, DJ get was thwarted by the tight ninety. A movie was a tight ninety, and then they didn't <laughs> do the math right when they did the projectors for this one. And this movie was like, DJ, it's time for you to go. Ninety minutes has passed. <laughs> Honestly, maybe yeah, I guess, I guess like uh, whatever was in there. Yeah, maybe the movie sensed that you were in it, and it was like, well, ninety minutes are up. DJ doesn't want movies longer than this, so we should just tell him to leave. <laughs> yeah, I think he can guess what happens. I think I think he and can like, figure it out. This is certainly a me problem, but like, just like the reason I think watching movies at home is better. And yes, I had the option for this, but like, I don't know. I, I wanted to see it in theaters, but I had to get up four times to go to the bathroom. That's not the movie oh. theater's fault. That's probably part of the witch's curse. Well, why didn't you talk to the theater people then? Because the bathroom is literally right next to the theater. Yeah, I, it's, it's right there. It's you walk outside quick because it's at the end of like the, it's like the end of the movie plex is where this shit is. Right. I think it's it's. it's, it's Kind of yeah. funny, you had the opportunity. I guess maybe you didn't, because I don't know when it came out. Like I think it came out on 
Friday or Thursday or whatever. Because it came yeah. out on Thursday, right? Right, right, right. Like, in real life. Did, so did you go on Wednesday? Was Wednesday the midnight no. premiere? No, I went Thursday at 7 p.m. Because they, no, well, they, like, bumped the release up from Friday to Thursday. Oh, well, I did not. I thought I did they not did. watch it then. But either way. If you, they did, that's not when I saw so it. So you could have watched it on Thursday, which means you could have taken out your phone and checked to see what the aspect ratio is supposed to look like. <laughs> you know, you can like, oh, yeah, no, I'm supposed to be able to see the whole title. <laughs> Which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Just like read all the subtitles as they happen out to the audience. Yeah, like, I right. know what this is supposed to be. <laughs> Say they go into the bathroom. I could just pull out my phone yeah. and be like, what am I missing? All right, That's all. <laughs> yo, you ever been to the, I think we have talked about this before, the ESPN zone. And, and other yeah, places yeah, do that. Like Buffalo Wild Wings where they have the TVs in the bathroom playing yeah. the thing. That would be sweet if they had those. I mean, I guess the problem isn't the peeing. It's a walking where you're like, I'm missing stuff. Um, like you, yeah, you know. But I mean, that's it's, part it's, of it. It's, it's it's right next to, and so it's it's super convenient. It's why I like I like that specific theater that I go to. It's uh, I talked about it before. It's what was where everything shakes. Oh it's yeah, it shakes. I love it. Yeah, that's pretty. What I don't love is bad aspect ratio. Yeah, oh, God. did it at least shake at the right times, or was it also yeah. <laughs> shaking to be programmed with like GI Joe or whatever? Oh my god. Um so that was a bummer for my movie going experience. Movie was great. Movie going experience was terrible. Yeah, it's I, really I, bad. Like zero out of ten. Well, I, DJ, uh, you should really just take the witch's descendant up to the to- the hall- tallest hill in the village and feed him the water from the stream there. You know? Well, I told I, you I how to, to fix this problem them. so many times. Okay, well I'm a big old idiot, I guess. Real jokester here. Yeah. Ugh. You're a real joke, and then I fall over. Um, Diggins, <laughs> how was your movie? Uh, or what did you think of this movie? And also, feel free to like make fun so of it's DJ. A bitch about your experience or, or like I did. Talk about how great it was. My movie experience was great. Everyone was quiet and respectful and laughed at the appropriate times. And at the end, every single member of the audience gave me a crisp $20 bill. <laughs> It's just so much. It's night and day. I really think that you and the witch an have like experience. a better, a better relationship than most people. Like Diggins goes and feeds the witch a nice, yummy, you know, KFC chicken sandwich or something every day yeah, right? to continue no, this a, like the, amicable the witch relationship. Witch and I play cards every week. Yeah, no, I go and play yeah. bridge with the witch. An empanada that we can't even see the witch eat. Pretty funny when you look back at it. You know, we'll talk about that bit. Um, but yeah, what did you think of the movie? I really liked it. I, uh, I think so. I think something that is good about the DCEU, even though in many of the previous examples, it has had bad effects is that they generally allow a very large degree of creative freedom to the extent that the MCU does not. (laughs) Unless you're David A. Yeah. Or James Gunn. You get MCU (laughs) control in the MCU. (laughs) You see James Gunn, you can do whatever you want. Well, you say that. However, I think this movie was much more of a James Gunn movie than any movie he's made with Marvel has been. I would that's say fair. that's fair. Although I think, I think the Marvel ones are like a James Gunn movie, but if it was PG thirteen, and this one is an R rated James Gunn movie, so I, I I think Marvel lets him talk about Jackson Pollock, you know, jizz in his Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and that's pretty James Gunn. But I feel like an R-rated Guardians of the Galaxy movie would be wild, especially knowing what happened here. Can you here. imagine? Yeah, that'd be so cool. But yeah, I, agree. I I would agree in general that they are that DC is probably better at this, you know, to to varying effects. Um, yeah. yeah, the problem is that for much of their history, the creative freedom they've been giving is to Zack Snyder, who sucks. Yeah, yeah right. But when you have, say, your Patty Jenkins in the first Wonder Woman, or your James Gunn in this movie. Then, like, getting to see these wildly different interpretations that use these characters uh, that are in theoretically in this shared universe, but are just very different uh, in very different styles and very different tones is interesting. And I think if they keep letting good people make their movies instead of bad people, then that could turn out very, you know, very interesting, like very worth watching. But as for this movie specifically, I mean, it's extremely funny. Uh, James Gunn just has an excellent sense of comedic timing uh, and just really great dialogue writing. But he also, uh, and this is something where DJ before the podcast was like, I'm surprised you like it because you don't like superhero movies. And I'm like, no, I do like superhero movies, but I like them 
when they recognize that there needs to be some kind of like dramatic emotional core that they're built around and like when it has that then it's then i'm all bought in on the stuff and james gunn is also very good at that both of the guardians movies are very good at that and this movie just has a real like good dramatic through line especially between Bloodsport and Ratcatcher, that just anchors the movie and you know makes it feel like something i should care about and i appreciate that i appreciate that someone took the time to make a real story and not just a bunch of goof em ups strung together. Even though a bunch of goof em ups strung together probably would have been fine. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. My theater going experience was I was at home and it was pretty solid. It was wow. so good. I didn't even go to his local no, theater to support years. the whatever. No, because there's a variant. But either even beyond that, I was like, here's what <laughs> happened. Here's what happened. I was home. And I was like, oh, yeah, the movie's out Thursday. I wanted to see the first 15 minutes because I knew exactly what was going to happen, but I wanted to see it. And I did, and then I was like, so "Okay." You knew, you yeah. knew that whole shit. Absolutely. Okay. Well, like I knew. I think if you if you watch a trailer again, it's very clear, ha- knowing what happens there. Like, okay, so this guy's here, and this guy's here, and this guy's here. You know, every shot of them is this one shot. So I think I know what it, the rest of the shots of them don't, don't exist. Uh, but I like I kind of wish honestly someone pointed this out I wish they made trailers like not even like Marvel does where they like use the wrong infinity stones I wish they um did what Deadpool 2 did where they just filmed completely different shots of like you know um oh god was Terry Crews like punching a guy and then Terry Crews explodes before he hits the ground and it's like oh yeah that was just to fake you out like that's pretty good um but yeah so I and I kind of knew I had a feeling especially knowing James Gunn that like the first bit was going to be what it would be to set up the rest of it. And I think that was great. Um, but then I was like, okay, I'm going to chill out. I'm going to watch it tomorrow. Uh, hopefully not get anything spoiled, but like watch with Hannah, have like a ch- like sit down and get popcorn, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, and, uh, and that was also great. Um, I, yeah, I really liked watching it at home and I would have watched it in a theater if it was better, if we were doing a better job as America, um, but, and it's well, not that I don't think it's happen, right. Yeah. It's not that I don't think it's safe, but it was just like, I don't want to have to bother with this, um, like worrying about it. But, uh, I thought overall it was a treat. It was terrific. Um, I think it was good that we got to see, um, you know, we just, they, they really, they really went for it. We got to see a man's flaccid penis in a superhero <laughs> movie. Finally, you not know, just a or, man's. Or prosthetic. Who's to say? Who else's flaccid penis did we see? Oh, Weasel Monsters. Was that that, though? I don't know. I'm not convinced that I was think, what that was. I think there's a, there's a, like a little bit where you can see the weasel's penis. I, I have, See, I could, I believe that that's possible, but I'm, I feel like you can, you can see the weasel's penis or you can't. Like, you can decide not to see it. You can't not to see that yeah. Winnie the Pooh looking dude. <laughs> Without. And the outline of John Cena's penis. Yeah, damn right. Yeah. And Grace, whatever the fuck her name is, can go cry in a corner. Did you see this? Someone's like, no. she's this, this awful YouTube reviewer who is famous for like being wrong about everything. And cool. and she was Wait, in Zombie Land too. You can have? Yeah, it's wild. Where do I um, sign up? And <laughs> you, you, and and she like she she said like. Uh, I don't really like this movie, and I think parents should be, you know, concerned. And which, like, yeah, parents could be concerned, but also like people should be concerned because you see some very suggestive underwear shots of John Cena. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, oh my god! Like, He's a wrestler. He's always in underwear. And That's like, point. whatever. It's you know his underwear. Like he's got a little definition there. Whatever. Have enjoy. Like <laughs> give it, give it a break. You also see a dude's dick. Like, I, think, <laughs> I don't think John Cena's underwear should be in the discussion. Um, yeah, also, I liked like, all the characters. Yeah, I can agree. Children shouldn't see this movie. That's why it's rated R. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I liked all the characters. I liked all the action. I liked it all. It was great. I think I think you could trim bits out of it to make it a little tighter. I think they're, like, I liked the Harley diversion uh, overall, but I've heard people say that they didn't like it. And I know some people... Harley Quinn is like like kind of hit or miss, I guess. Not really hit or miss, but like some people love her, some people hate her. Um, just find her kind of annoying. I like her 
plenty. And I think Margot Robbie does a great job with her. But so I could see the only way that I like the only not even like legitimate criticism, but just style thing that I totally buy with someone is if they're just like, nah, I don't really like the Harley thing. And, but I also think you could just take that out, like just fast forward through it. It's fine. Um, because everything else I think is super tight and like everything has good connection to everything else. Like it's like this guy talks about this thing and then this thing comes up later, which is great. Um, yeah, I liked all the actors. They were all great. There weren't any that weren't great. Um, yeah, it was great. Even the characters that I was like, this one's going to be annoying. Like Steve Ag behind the computer. It's pretty solid. <laughs> you know, not that I think Steve Ag is annoying, but like that character could frequently be written as annoying um yeah i think that they were it was a good movie um it was a good movie did we it see any, we saw movie. we saw a, a pianist did we see any boobs were there boobs in this movie i legit can't remember i don't think so they go to like a so. club but they don't yeah it's not like a strip club which is good so that's something i feel no i feel like there might have been were there i really don't think so yeah you're probably I mean, right that, that club scene is the only time it would have happened and i'm pretty sure it didn't so yeah so that's interesting um but yeah i don't know all all in all best dceu movie for me by a mile and best movie of the year so far i mean it's very different than luca so maybe it's tied with luca, <laughs> <laughs> from luca. yeah really i i was, I was like i was watching this movie and i was like hmm, get a lot of luca vibes from this <laughs> <laughs> yeah right the shark man could easily be in luca <laughs> <laughs> just eats Luca at the end of Luca. It's pretty good. Um, so good podcast, boys. Yeah. Well, uh, next solid week, movie. Free Guy, I think. Free Guy. Free Guy. All right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Where do you want to start? I mean, not even where do you want to start. Let's talk about characters. How about this? You let's. Uh, who is everybody's favorite character? DJ, you can go first mm. since you won the game by saying the word bl- uh, blood sport once. <laughs> it's obviously All blood takes. sport. Um, Damn. I don't. I don't know. I feel like. It's Polka Dot Man, but it's really? not Polka Dot Man. Yeah, because I love the idea of that character, and I feel like it's the most, like, realistic in terms of given this premise. Yeah, like, this makes sense. Like, you're a criminal, and you're sad all the time. So that's, like, probably why you're a criminal, because you're sad all the time. And now you're forced to do this job, and you just want to fucking die. And at the end, you get this, like, awesome, like, little redemptive thing, and your bits are funny, and you just have, like, a weird power. And, like, I just always got a lot of joy seeing him on the screen. Like, the right answer is probably, like, King Shark, but I don't know. I just really got had, like, a lot of fun with Polka Dot Man. I have a question, DJ. Oh, Also, yeah. let's spoil it from here on out, because if you haven't seen oh, it, yeah, all spoilers watch all it. Time. DJ, yeah, when yeah. you look at me, do you also see your mother? Is that how you see the world, <laughs> too? And that's why it's you connect actually... with this guy so much? A different thing. I see my father. So ah, so okay. Good. That makes a lot of sense. Very good. Very good. From what I know uh, about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, uh, so, yeah. No, I loved I liked him a lot. I liked him a lot. I, Diggins, what about you? Who's your favorite character? Red Catcher. Two. Two. Yeah. She was yeah, good. Give me that answer. I, lo- was good. I loved her. She was very good. She was very sweet. Her narcolepsy was fun, except they abandoned it halfway through the movie. Well, I mean, you know. They only slept once over, like, there was only one day of sleeping where it was like, yeah. where could you sleep? But I did like that she was sleepy. She was, I wouldn't say it was narcolepsy as much as just like, she doesn't like being up early. I get that. Yeah. She's a, uh, she's yeah, nocturnal, the right? The rats. Are rats, rats nocturnal? I, guess, yeah. I, mean, yeah, like, I actually don't know about that. They're not nocturnal, but I do think they're like creatures. I've seen the them in the daytime. I'm sure you I mean, not. I've seen like, them at all times of day. I live in New York City. Yeah, I feel like I've seen the He's most seen rats right during night. I'm know. waving to a rat right now. Wow. Sebastian, oh my god. Yeah, I think Sebastian could easily be the best character. Uh, was that your favorite? Name? No, I, I think my favorite, I don't know. I think my favorite might have been Rick Flagg. I liked him a lot in this movie. Oh, I liked like his him. dynamic and how he held it all together. I can't believe how much more of a character he is in this one. Yeah. It's crazy. Like I, and it's I, crazy how different he is. I think that's it for me is like he feels like almost most improved player. So that, <laughs> that makes me go like, oh, yeah, I really do like you. Like I'm looking at a picture of all the characters now. I really do like all of them. I like Peacemaker a lot. Like that was a really interesting take on that guy. And I think it 
was he was always very fun to watch. Um, especially when he was on aware, if you ask me. But no, he uh, hey, he's, he was funny, and I think he was like I got his character. Um, in a way that I think, and I, and you know what we've talked about it before. John Cena not always like quite the best actor. Not that he's not good, but like you know. I don't think he's been used properly. He needs a certain role. Yeah, this it's, was he can't do everything. Dom. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. And even like, what was the other one? The, what's the other John? The, oh, like the cow in that barnyard. Movie. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, Bumblebee, right? Where you're like, he's almost there. Yeah, he's close. Yeah. But this was this was a little bit more unreal. Like he was so heightened that I think he worked. Like his wrestling. Because well, he he paid is off. a comic book character, right? Yeah. Like John Cena is a comic book character. Absolutely. He's, he's like the closest thing, even in like wrestling parlance, it's like not even close. I'm like really stretching here. But it's like a modern day like Hulk Hogan. Like yeah. eat your vegetables, take your vitamins, blah blah blah. And like everything about him is so over the top. Yeah. So yeah. I would say you could also make a case like you could make a case for King Shark being the best character. Um just because he's fun, but I don't think he's in it enough to be, like, my favorite character. Yeah. And then I think there's a case for Harley Quinn. I think she's very funny in this movie. This is the funniest she's ever been. Um, I think she has the single best scene in the movie. Uh, the breakout out of the, like, Yeah, the, the that, that was a solid scene. I, I love that so oh, much. I thought you were I, talking about her fucking. Yeah, that was great. Uh, her fucking was also fun. I, yeah. I that, think that she, good. I think she also has my favorite joke of the movie. Um, Wait, uh, the splooge, you think this is the splooge? No, I, I could take or leave that kind of James Gunniness where they talk about how big Drax's turds are. Um, yeah. No, I loved when they were given the rundown to the thinker and everyone's saying, oh, like, we're going to yeah. do this, we're going to do this. And she just says, like, I am walking back and forth. I, like, love that. <laughs> that was um, pretty good. Like, and it's easy to forget, like, stuff like that because it's not that important, but it's very funny. Um, I have a question for you, too. Yeah? Does yeah. James Gunn hate birds? <laughs> hmm. Hey, that bird got Seriously. to have its revenge. Yeah. But, like, okay, the the bird did to get had to have its revenge, but, like, all the birds that that crazy Presidente guy kills at the end, like, that was oh, fucking nuts. More like halfway through. Yeah, I would say, like, right, that's, like, your halfway point. I mean, there were birds at the end that were flying around. You could see birds, like, at the, when they were... After they had solved a big problem. So, I think birds were just a symbol of, like, this guy's cool, this guy sucks. Like, this but guy like, why, kills like, birds. Why did... Feel bad. Don't feel bad about when he explodes. Oh, okay. You know? So, hate, hate, right, hate him when the starfish attaches to his face. Even though he gives, like, the one sympathetic line in the movie. Which was a weird kind of, like, whiplash to feel. What was his sympathetic line? Well, that I was just floating in space watching the stars, and I was so happy. Well, he's being well, star, the star man, not the right? president. Right, but he's attached to the guy's face. Sure. So, like, it was delivered by the guy who gas- gasoline the birds. If you say so. I think it's more... I think Savant is the better one, where you're, like... You see this guy, and you're like, am I going to feel bad when these guys all die? And then he kills a bird, and you're like, nah, he sucks. Go get him, explosive. <laughs> like, and then, yeah, and I think the payoff with the bird was good. I, the birds are also, like, you know, like a little metaphor for, like, things in cages and stuff. But, um... And how if you're in a cage, and someone puts gasoline on you and lights you on fire, you're fucking dead. Yeah, it's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a metaphor for how the one guy was content to, like, rule the country and, like, yeah. keep everyone imprisoned, but they could stay alive, and the other one wants to burn it all down. Yeah, he oh, sucked. Oh, shit. I'm gonna have to share that one with Michelle, because she was like, why was this here? And I'm gonna tell her that and see if she, like, buys that. Yeah. So... We'll see. If she doesn't buy it, Dickens, I'm coming back to you and be like, give me a better metaphor. I mean, what's not to buy? (laughs) I think it's pretty straightforward, you know? It's like a... But also... I'm not not arguing the symbolism here is, like, super deep. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Alternatively, James Gunn hates birds. How does he... Well, can we we read anything into Guardians movies about birds? I'm trying to think if there's any birds in it. I don't know if there's birds in, yeah, those movies. Not a lot of birds that I can think of. Not even like weird space birds, really. Yeah, yeah, right. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on birds. And you do, you do figure you could, I could envision a scene where like Rocky Raccoon or or Groot just like casually eats a bird, but they don't. Yeah, don't right. They do That's that. like right out of the playbook. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's probably some birds in some of those planets. We don't see them, but maybe they're there. Uh, I think James Gunn is hates Michael Rooker. 
You just hate him. <laughs> but I like oh, I like man. James That's Gunn's relationship fair. with Michael Rooker and all of his actors and how he's like, yeah, you come in and you die because you're Michael Rooker. What are you gonna do? Not be in my movie? No. Go explode. Do you think that Warner Brothers told James Gunn you could kill anyone except for Harley Quinn? This is not on the table. She has the thickest and bulkiest of plot armor. That it's it's. In fact, not only could she not be killed, she needs to get a scene where she does the impossible. Just just truly. Yeah, I, like, I do think she's shit. the only character that is unkillable, which is a shame because I think you could kill her in this movie and I'd feel pretty good about it. Like I feel like that's a solid arc throughout these three I movies. Will, I will say. I almost feel like from a sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say. Real quick, from a comic Suicide Squad perspective, Har- Harley never dies. Yeah, right? like like if you, she's never one of the people who gets killed. If you cut her out of this movie and or just swapped in like you know Plastique or some other, I don't know Plastique, some other woman who can do martial arts and stuff. Katana. Speaking Killer of Katana, Frost. where was Katana during this one scene? Yeah. You know, yeah, um, resort traps the souls of her enemies. Yeah, she could have used her to watch somebody. Could have used her to watch his back. Uh, no, but, like, if you sw- swapped her in, I would be like, you know what? Anybody on this team could die at any point. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if someone just gets shot. But, like, when Harley's around and they're in, like, a car, I'm like, well, the car's not going to explode now. Or, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Um, what That's were you fair. saying, Dickens? I was going to say, I mean, if you had just no context told me who is in this movie, there are three characters I would have picked that wouldn't have died, and two of them did. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well... Is one of them the one that doesn't die? No. But, like, almost dies or is revived at the end? I'm saying, like, don't tell me the actor. Just tell me the characters and ask me which ah, ones okay. are not going to die. I would have picked three of them, and two of them died. Who are your Actually, two? Actually, fully us who, died. Can you tell us your pick since we're in full spoiler anyway? Yeah, sure. I would have said Harley Quinn, obviously. Yeah. But then I also would have said Captain Boomerang and Rick Flag. See, uh... I think, I, I do think after the first movie... And, like, knowing Cat Boomerang was in this, I did kind of make my peace with him. I was like, he's probably going to die. Even before the trailers. I, not. I was like, that's not ready. Because that is, like, your big death that happens in the, early in the movie that's like, he's probably going to kill some people that you maybe don't expect. Rick Flag, I didn't, I wouldn't, I didn't think they'd kill him. But once I saw the movie, I was, like, once the movie started, I, I got a very different vibe that was like, this guy is in danger. He could we get it, Nando. Point. You're a genius. You know all the things. Well, no, no. Nothing I'm just saying. You. Like he had, he had such a, he had such a clear arc where it was like he is good now. He is nice, and it's like, oh, you don't want to be nice in a movie like this. That is an easy way to die, being sacrificed or whatever. Um, but if it was like the last Rick Flag, then yeah, I feel like he'd probably live. Same way like Amanda Waller. I didn't think she was dying. You know, she was she was probably my nah, one that no was way. like, how could she? Although I think she she's might. She's not the squad. Though. She might have she's some like troubles. That. Uh, yeah, I don't know if right? she's gonna be able to like remember I, things that well in the future, <laughs> um, or have her job possibly. I don't know. That's totally on the table. Yeah, I mean, I don't think she's the one in danger of losing her job of the people in that room. Oh no, yeah. Well, I mean, I think she just might not be able to like you know form sentences, get hit in the head with a <laughs> golf yeah. club, and like maximum knockout pressure. <laughs> like you're you're this bad. Well, this is a comic book movie, so we've already accepted the premise that there's a way to like hit people in the head and make yeah. them go unconscious that doesn't cause permanent permanent brain damage. Very true. Um, that is very true. I think I also would have said that Ratcatcher probably wouldn't die because she's like small and nice, but then she did die in the first draft of the movie, and then they saved her um, and swapped is her that, with Polka Dot a, Man who died. So is that a real thing? Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. They were gonna. Oh, wow. I think they said they were gonna switch to. Like they they switched to and the character that died was Ratcatcher, so it has to be Ratcatcher or like it has to be either Peacemaker or Polka Dot Man, or I guess Rick Flag. But I feel like the Peacemaker Rick Flag scene, the movie doesn't happen without it. So I feel like the Polka Dot Man death is the one that's kind of like, eh, you could probably probably kill him. Like you, like that one feels like a you know on the day decision. Do we kill this guy or not? Yeah, that's fair. Um. Yeah, I think all the characters were good. What well, I don't know. What do you, what'd you think? What do you think of the weird, like the the strange characters? Who did who did you guys like the most? Like TDK. Well, I guess TDK is my actual favorite. Then, if we're going it, it by that, because I love Nathan Fillion, and I thought his bit was like the funniest thing. Yeah, I like that he's ashamed that he is TDK. Right? <laughs> like it's pretty funny. I mean, also, he doesn't like to talk the, about the it, sec- but he looks very proud of himself when he's doing it. Yeah, right? He's like, yeah. he he just, he has to show his thing. Like, but 
you can't hear it. Like, you can't hear about it and go, like, that's so stupid. Uh, I mean, also, Harley going, what the fuck, was, like, truly, like, hilarious. Like, the timing on that, like, the way she delivered it and how, it was just, like, that might have been the second funniest line in the movie. Like, I thought she was, like, great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, all, all the Harley stuff, especially when she was with the squad, was very good. Her bit with yeah. Milt, the Milton bit was funny. Um, They figured her out for sure, right? Like, DC is, like, the, the movies are, like, oh, yeah, we kind of know, we finally know how to do this character. And it's not like butt shorts and just like, I love you, Mr. J. It's like she could actually be a character that works and is funny. And you know. We just have yeah, to make sure I, Jared Leto doesn't come within 50 feet of her. <laughs> <laughs> I even think like the character as like is written has kind of, I think the thing I liked about her the most here, even maybe more than Birds of Prey, is she feels a little bit more hmm, like comfortable in the in the in the role like not in the like not like the actor but like the the character like has made peace with that she is harley quinn and that she is kind of annoying but she's like i guess i I like that like you know she she's cracking jokes and she's i don't know what i liked about her most in this movie but i do think she worked for me the most here um i i think there's a combination of like in birds of prey I feel like there's no sense for, like, wait, why is she kind of, like, a super villain or just, like, villain or whatever? But, like, you at least understood what she brought to the table in this movie, and she had her own identity, which I thought helped a lot. Yeah. Like, it was like, oh, she's, like, uh, she's she's good at using a spear, and she's, you know, great uh, at a martial arts whatever, and DJ? She had one, whatever, whatever. And, uh, yeah, she's, and, but also she's funny. It, like, it, like, blended, um, like, the good stuff of Birds of Prey with, like, what actually makes her interesting, I think. And I think that's why she, like, really worked for me in this movie. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. I don't know. I wonder if we'll ever, do you think we'll ever see this Harley Quinn again? Oh, yeah. They're, they're gonna ride this into the fucking moon, baby. I mean, in, how? Like, I do, I do think. Just keep making shit. Like, whatever. What are you gonna make? Like, I, well, I don't know. I think they're going to have to make smaller Harley Quinn movies with smaller budgets. Yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. That's fair. Yeah. But I, this is no way that this is the last time we'll see Margot Robbie on the big screen as Harley Quinn. There's just no way. I think you're they, probably right. I mean... Because then, got, then you kill her. T- if that's the case, kill her. We've got to tell the rest of Cassandra Kane's story. Yeah, right? <laughs> How she goes from, like, the thieving little kid with a hat to the most dangerous assassin on the planet. Well, I'll figure that out. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I mean, e- like, yeah. I feel like we've heard that they kind of do want to have her do stuff and tell the Poison Ivy. Like, I feel like the funniest part of her here is we still haven't seen her do, like, a proper Batman story. Um, right. But it doesn't seem like we'll ever get that since who knows what the Batman is going to be like in this universe. But yeah. after Matt Reeves takes over, I, do- I don't think they'll continue with, like, dueling banjos, you know, like all the Batman at once, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you there. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I liked, I like TDK. I like Javelin a lot. I liked that he had a Javelin. They never got to use it. Oh, that was fun. And that's his whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just stood up to use the Javelin and got killed. Like, I think, I think the thing that I like most about these guys in mean, the first scene, cause I loved the first scene, even though they killed Captain yeah. Boomerang. I love that. They like, you had like Savant, you had this introduction where he's like, you know, super good at th- throwing stuff i guess he's just like you know he's great at that um and he's a savant you might say exactly and you get a sense like oh this guy's like pretty competent and then you put him on this like vietnam war kind of scenario and it's like oh yeah but he like just robs banks like he doesn't this isn't his his game none of them are right really made for this besides characters like captain boomerang and harley who have just done it enough that they don't really even care but like yeah I, I, I do like, yeah, you can put, like, Javelin or, or, or Savant in there, and it's like, yeah, but I mean, like, they absolutely stink in not a bank robbery. Especially fighting, not fighting someone that, like, will agree not to kill them. So Yeah, right? It's like you're going up just against an army? Yeah. Like, that's your, that's your plan. Yeah. I, I will say, I think the disposable nature of the characters... um was helpful here. I'd be curious on like what you guys think kind of in general is this as a, as a concept because like we think this works. But uh so the red letter media guys kind of talked about this a little bit, but there's just like and the idea that both Marvel and DC 
have like an infinite well of just like random characters that from the golden age of comics that like no one's ever seen um they talked about how like planet money apparently bought one of these characters because like the rights ran out and they were never renewed right it was for, like a guy named microface and it's like that's planet money's mascot is microface he has a microphone face yeah um, and like that's what they did here right like we're just gonna get so many randos and put them in it's like who knows what'll happen and do you think this is a formula that can keep working on any level or if this is like a one-off thing and you have to use batman and superman and wonder woman and you know even harley quinn to some extent you can't just like pull out a fucking javelin or savant uh, to make think, your movie cool like this is just like a one-time gig i don't know i think you can you probably gotta have something in there that people care about but then again i mean like guardians of the galaxy when that came out yeah it was like, not a set of characters that any mainstream audience member cared about in the least. As long as you tell a good story with those characters, then I think people care because the story is good and that makes them care about the character, you know? I think they could continue this brand of, like, the Suicide Squad as... I I think they would have to scale down the budget a lot. Like, don't have them fight a big giant starfish at the end. Oh, but I love that. I like it, but I, I don't think it's necessary. I think they could just no. fight an army, and it's fun. But um, I think if you scaled down the budget a little bit, you could just make you know, fifty like thousand dollar movies or fifty million dollar movies, which like seems like a ton, but isn't that much comparatively? And yeah, just put a random squad of guys in. Like you really could go into the dregs and just pick the dumbest ones. And I think we would. I think we would gravitate towards that as long as they're well made. And if if DC was able to make the Suicide Squad brand into a thing, um, especially if like I think you could take Harley Quinn out. I think you could, and I think that's the nice thing about this. You could take actors that do mo- like one movie and then put them in it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah, you know, if yeah, Al Pacino Hugo doesn't want to be in fifty of these, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then just make them a guy. But I, I, I def- DC definitely, and I think even more than Marvel, like we're aware of who these characters are because some of these Batman, like a lot of them are Batman villains and like there've just been so many Batman things that we've seen so many of them. Like you could put King Tut, you know, you could put Maxi Zeus, you could put uh, Egghead, you know, any of those sixties characters. And then you could put Condiment King or, or, or Dollface or even like Clayface or the characters from the nineties show. You could easily put them in this and it would work. I even think like, I think the the idea that this is a separate universe would would give you a little bit of leeway into that you could put like Mr. Freeze on the Suicide Squad and it's like eh, he might die I don't know he's probably not gonna be in the next one of these so why not um, I just think they'd need to continue I think they need to innovate a little bit story wise and like well what are the Suicide Squad doing now because I do think the story we got is very simple. It, in terms of like what the old Suicide Squad books were, the John Ottman um, or Ostander, I can never remember his name, but together wrote them in the in the eighties or whatever, where they were just like drop the Suicide Squad into a jungle, they kill a bunch of people, some of them die. Um, so like I think they have to pick a genre, like the spy genre or something like that, and then wiggle into that because like Mission right. Impossible is able to do, you know, the same movie every year pretty much. Or, like, every couple of years where they change the setting, change the villains, change the stunts. Yeah. And it works. So, then, like, James Bond, you know, you, you could, I think you could do it. And I think it's, I think it's even, like, a new genre of thing where when Chris Pratt becomes the biggest star in the world, you just kill him. And then you don't have to hire him for the next one. And you don't have to spend lots of money. But the brand is strong enough that it will continue without a big star. So, you can keep the budget low. Like... Who do you think is the most expensive actor here? Harley? Idris Elba. Mm. He's got it. It's got to be Idris Elba. I think Margot Robbie could have been the most expensive actor. Yeah, it's, it's like one of them. Like I, you know, In my I mind, it's a three-way way. tie between the two of them and John Cena. Same. I think John Cena could also be the most expensive actor. Honestly, Sylvester Stallone, who voiced the shark, That's a great should point. be the yeah. most expensive actor if it's just a movie where they all are equal time. Um... Yeah, I, I feel like you, 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 he doesn't get as much because he just probably was in a voice booth for one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said like five lines and then went home. Yeah, I feel like it's. I I agree. I think it's three way tab between those three, um, and one of them's dead. Although he's coming back for his show, or we'll we'll talk about that. 
one of them doesn't need to be in these anymore. Like Idris Elba could just not show up again. And yeah. uh and Harley Quinn's kind of her own thing, so you don't have to put her back into this either. But then I think you could make another one of these where you just bring back Polka Dot Man, Ratcatcher, King Shark, you know, and that's that's a team plus five or six other guys. Well Polka Dot Man's dead, so Oh yeah, right, right. Sorry, I forgot little, about him. A little there, bit of a problem. Is there, there somebody else I forgot about then? Um, Peacemaker. Who are the four that survive? Four of them walk out. Ratcatcher, Harley, Bloodsport. Okay, yeah, never mind. So you could put, you could do Ratcatcher, King Shark, and I guess the Weasel. Um, but you could put them in a movie and then add like you know, like Condom and King or or like uh, Slipknot. Let's do Slipknot again. Oh, yeah. bring them back. Yeah, Coward. and like send oh, them into you know, I don't know, Afghanistan this time, and have them kill. You know, I don't know the Blue Beetle or something. I, I, I'm trying to think of like a villain, like an alien race that invaded, but looks like people and not a big starfish. And then eh, that's like a fine movie. Can I say that I think this James whole Gunn's the important part? Uh, this whole conversation has reminded me of one of my favorite jokes in the movie. Yeah, uh, early on when they're recruiting the B team, that is the characters we actually follow. Uh, she's got Idris Elba, and then she goes up to Peacemaker and <laughs> yeah. lists the exact same backstory that she gave uh, for him. Yeah. Do you think that Bloodsport was originally Deadshot? Yes. That's actually 100% right? confirmed. We know that. Oh, it is? Okay, cool. Yeah. Why did they switch? Couldn't what get Will was Smith. the problem? They, well, but recast it was, him. What it was it never. It was going to be recasting De- Idris Elba as Deadshot, but then they're oh. like, oh, let's leave room for Will Smith to come back if he wants. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you think sense. that's what's going on? No, like that's like that's like confirmed, DJ. That happened. I think that makes sense. Oh, okay, like I don't think we'll ever get Will Smith back because I don't think it's Me worth neither. bringing him back for the money he would cost. Um, and I think if anything, you would want to distance yourself from that movie as much as you can. Um, but yeah, but then if he looks at hey, this one was good and people like it, and he's like, right? Mm. Let me come ruin it with my bad karma or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is with him. He needs to fix the witch curse thing. I mean, I I maintain this. I thought he was the bar none best part of Suicide Squad. However, I don't your know if mind. Oh my he god, he is. He just is. Um, and I just don't know if he works in this movie. I got a hot take for you. I got. A, you want a hot take? I got a hot take for you. I well, uh, real quick. I think he is maybe not the worst part of the original Suicide Squad, but the most nothing. I think he could not be in the movie, and I totally for like I'd be like, More oh yeah, that's right. He would. Rick I would have a Milton moment with him where I'm like, dead <laughs> shot, dead shot. Did he do any cool dead shot tricks? No. But anyway, what's your hot take, DJ? All right, here's my hot take, and and this is one that Michelle originally said at first that I balked at, but I think I super agree with. I think that Will Smith's relationship with his daughter, the dead shot one in Suicide Squad, is better portrayed and conveyed. Than the bloodshot Idris Elba relationship with his daughter in this movie, when they're like basically the same thing. They're um, like totally different. Will Deadshot's daughter loves him. Yeah. I, uh, does he? Yeah. Well, Idris Elba also loves his daughter. Yeah, but they hate You're each other. You're threatening my daughter. No, 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 like no, no, I'm guarding DJ, the Master Emerald. I it's said, very important that I guard the Master Emerald. I, said, I have to do this while I'm in it. It's very important. Sonic <laughs> Tails, we gotta go right now. Look at the boobs on that bat. She's amazing. <laughs> I'm Australian. Coming to get us. Oh Why do I even bother? Um, DJ that. or Diggins I, was going to say, <laughs> "I'm sorry, go ahead, Diggins." That you, yeah. I said, that I'm wrong. Deadshot's daughter loves him, not the other way around. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah this uh, this arc is the like I'm gonna make my daughter love me arc, as opposed to the I'm gonna be the man my daughter thinks I am arc, which is what Deadshot has kind of. I think they're both, but that's also what this is, too. Because at the end, she goes, oh, my God, that's my dad. Yeah. Like, it's the same thing. Well, but this one, the first one is redemption. Uh, the, this one is, like, a redemptive arc, whereas this, this the other one, like, redemptive to the point of, like, she hates me. I'm going to make her like me. Whereas with Deadshot, it's like, I want to protect her because I already, I, I like her. And also, she, she like, dead sh- if you don't do, if you don't dead do this, the world to be destroyed, my daughter lives in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. De- <laughs> my daughter. Deadshot also already wants like wants to be in his daughter's life like this is just preventing him from doing that Bloodsport has to learn 
to even want that in the first place. He wants his daughter far away from him because he doesn't think he can be any good to her. Right. Mm. Yeah, I, I think Deadshot, Bloodsport's, you know, he like sees his daughter turning into him and is like, that's the worst thing ever, so I need to be a better person. And I, I don't think Deadshot had that. Although I do think the fact that daughter is the motivation for both of these characters is pretty is funny. Like, it's just... I, I believe it really that, was written for blood sport. Uh, I was going to say I dead shot. Jesus, that is an artifact of this character originally being dead shot. Yeah, no, I, I, I believe it. Um, Guys, you know who's going to be in the next Suicide Squad? Blood shot. Yeah, he can be Vin blood Diesel? sport. Dead shot. You get bl- dead blood shot. Mm. He would and never be in can, a movie. And then he can be told that the war on terror is pointless. And he says, what if the war on terror is good and we just have to fight different people? Yeah, and we can trick <laughs> we can trick the rock into being it. Black Adam can be the bad guy. And that's like, oh, now they all have to be in a movie together. And Tyrese can be, I don't know, Condiment King. Polka Dot Man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Polka Dot Man, man too. Tyrese would, oh, oh, Calendar Man. Tyrese would we be already a have a Calendar, calendar man. Man's already in this movie, DJ. The Calendar Man too. then. We'll have another Calendar Man. <laughs> Calendar Ants in this movie? Oh, yeah, I forgot they mentioned like him. For, like, a second. They don't mention him. We, like, see him. Yeah. He's making fun of Polka was this, Dot now. Was he cut off? Was he in the top uh, half of right. your screen? Maybe he was. Maybe <laughs> DJ couldn't see the top of his head and didn't get it. That's Sean Gunn's guy. Yo, no, but for real. Yeah. In, I'm not even joking. When Polka Dot yeah. Man is taken out of his cell, he's, like, being harangued at by, like, two prisoners. One is Sean Gunn, and then the other one is, like, some guy with a playing card on his face who is supposed to be apparently doubled down. Um, but uh, uh, the character that is Sean Gunn is Calendar Man, and you can only tell because at the top of his head he has that ring of, you know, Jan Febmar. I, I really think I missed that. I really think I missed that. This, yeah. is, this is just... I mean, there's a oh, wide shot where you can probably see it, but also you probably wouldn't know to look for it. Um, yeah, I'm very upset just by. It. Thank you for reopening I mean, my PTSD. Yeah, DJ, experience with DJ, Nando. you don't see race. You know, you think that could have been Tyrese. You know, Sean Gunn <laughs> has yeah. a very Tyrese energy. Um, I where, where are we going with this? Oh, I think Bloodsport was fine. I like that. But the most interesting thing about Bloodsport to me was all his bullshit on his body and his like, that he has his like, you know, <laughs> slingshot as a modular weapon. Modular guns and modular fucking. guns. His modular sword. His little like. You know, chest piece that, yeah, pretty wild. It's like sidearm crossbows. Yeah. I, I think oh, it's... He also, he delivered another one of my favorite jokes. What's that? Uh, when uh, he and Peacemaker are having the kill competition. Uh, oh. Uh, and he says, nobody likes to show off. Uh, and Peacemaker goes, they do if what they're showing off is dope as fuck. And I just love how... He just, like, turns around and goes, fuck, that's true. Yeah. (laughs) That got me. I do. I also liked his, um, I I liked when Starro popped out of the whole, you know, Jotunheim and then Amanda Waller or someone over the thing is like, Deadshot, we got a situation. And he's just like, yep. I thought that was a very good, like, comedic, like, little read of that line. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I liked him. Except... He is, like, the least exciting member of the team, so he is the one that I'm, like, not, like, take or leave, but, you know. He's the most normal. Yeah. Uh, what else was cool about this movie? The R rating in the rated R. Yeah, what Fucking was your favorite awesome. R-rated part of the movie? Besides that was one guy's that guy's dick. So- <laughs> yeah. I got you. I, I know you dig it. You've done enough of these. What else? <laughs> so... I, I don't know if it's, like, favorite, but it, like, really stuck out to me and just something that's, like, such an interesting thing that gets at the savagery of, I guess, specifically Peacemaker. But when they're going through the um, Solsoria camp, which we should totally fucking talk about, uh, like, the Freedom Fighters, and John Cena just takes an axe and fucking just, like, axes a dude from his, like, groin to his forehead. It was like, Jesus Christ. Like... Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think a lot of what that scene, like, really... Not that you need it for a movie, but I think it helps because it's like, yeah, that's what these guys do. Right, yeah. This is their kind of whole theme. Wolverine, like, in the first couple X-Men movies, just, like, you know, flashes his his hand by your face and then you fall over. And you're like, yeah, I got clawed to death. Yeah, that is nice. Um, 
See, in that same vein, I loved when De- uh, when uh, Boomerang cut that guy's head in half. Like that was another great whole one. thing. That yeah. just one shot is better than the whole first movie. Uh, not just Boomerang either. Like every single second of it. Um, Pete Davidson's face, like he's oh, seen, like so seeing the good. chunky bits. Like yeah. The, I always enjoy not having to look at Pete Davidson's face. Right? They really <laughs> cast that perfectly. I was like, this guy they really we're all going to hate. I like. I'm like, how much acting is he going to do? <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, right? Like, Pete Davidson, you figure out what, you know, Pete Davidson it up. We're not going to give you any lines. Just, like, be a real shithead. Nah, he's probably cool. Yeah. Um, or whatever. Not if you ask Ariana prob- Grande. Eh, he's probably, he's probably eh. a 20 year old who is way too famous for his own good and had a terrible childhood. So, like, I don't know what I expect from him. Since he's not frequently killing people, he's doing okay. You know, he's above board. Um, I was going to say uh, I liked, uh, violence-wise, um, I liked when they did the Mortal Kombat shot, when they killed that was Rick good. Flag. That was awesome. That was very cool. I like that. I like when King Shark tears that man in half vertically. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. That was ver- I like that he specified vertically. He tore him in half vertically. Yeah. Well, horizontally is so much less impressive. Absolutely. That's true. Anyone could do that. Yeah. This you're tearing a whole man in half. Plus you get the wide arms, like it's like a big, you know, big big old moment. Um yeah. It was cool. What else was cool? I don't know. Uh, all the violence, all the all the them saying fuck. You know what it is about the difference between this movie and like Deadpool, you know? Uh cuz obviously they're both the R-rated superhero movies because <laughs> Everyone forgets about Blade, and is Blade all right? It's got to be, right? I, is I it? have no idea. There's so much blood, but maybe Time it was from Google before the, Blade the before movie. days. Um, but I, I think the, th- the difference with Deadpool is like Deadpool will say, like, you know, his his lines will be like, "You fuck what cock," you know, but <laughs> like, and then these guys are like these guys just say like, "Fuck, man, that sucks," and you're like, "Yeah, that's how people talk." That's how a human being sounds when they curse, and I like that. I don't think it's, you know, necessary in every sense, but, like, what you're saying, where, like, dope as fuck, like, that line works where you're... That's the stuff where I want, you know... Like, I want people to get cut in half by Wolverine and be like, fuck, I just got cut in half. (laughs) You know? That's that's how you would react to that. Yeah. (laughs) I wish I didn't just get cut in half. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're that guy from X Men Three who can get cut in half. Remember that guy who likes fighting Wolverine, and Wolverine just cuts all his arms off, and he's like, "I oh, can yeah. do this. It's fine." And then Wolverine kicks him in the balls, and he's like, "For some reason, this doesn't count. I am pain now. This is bad for me." Um, what else is great about this movie? Soundtrack solid. Oh, I'd li- yes, I'd like to talk about that. So obviously, like James Gunn has a thing. With music in his movies, right? Yes. No, I haven't. I haven't wait seen a second, body. DJ. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. James Gunn. Yeah. yeah. Music. I know. Wow. Yeah, you, <laughs> hold it's on. Almost like. Explain yourself, counselor. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's almost like he had like the most fame or like the highest 2014 album, even though it was a compilation album, so that doesn't fucking count. But like, whatever. I guess it counts because people said that it counted. Um, My mom whatever. bought that album. I have it. I really. I think. Well, Thing, oh, I know you have it. I remember you being like the the number one stand for this album. Yeah, if I recall, solid correctly. album. It's like all dad rock, but it's like you know it all works. I bring N- up my Nando's mom hiding his true colors. because he's, she's, he's embarrassed. She's not someone who even saw the movie. Yeah, but me and like Dickens' mom are cool. You know, we're the coolest two out of the whole group. <laughs> I get it. I mean, it's um, definitely not me. <laughs> Uh, second one, also a good album. I actually think the second one, I don't know. I mean, the first one we played, like, just not even we played, but, like, the world decided we had to hear those songs constantly after that. Yeah, it's true. Uh, whereas the second one didn't. But, yeah. Um, but so in this movie, right, it's, it's, I feel like it was more, like, James Gunn geared. Also, the music wasn't, like, a plot point. Um, also, but the music the- wasn't the most obvious choice possible, like in Suicide Squad when Harley picks up well, a that's bat was- and they start playing "Hey, bat, a bat, hey, bat, a bat, a swing." Yeah, let let's cast, let's write a new like soundtrack, but for this movie, if if it was the old one, like 
What would Rat Catcher song be? What's a song about um, rats? I think I smell a rat. Is that a song? We can do that. Sounds yeah, I think it's good. by the White Stripes or something. What about? Or you you play a song by the band Rat. Oh yeah, that's like another uh, like because it's 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 almost subtle, but it's not. It's like round and round, and just like oh, that's song by Rat. Um, but yeah, it was just like it was great how the music was just like the most like hokey thing, and also like. There, there was a lot of whiplash where it was like Seven Nation Army to Rolling Stones to this other fucking thing in the first one. And, and this one, it was kind of more natural. Um, yeah. And it just felt like James Gunn knew what he was doing. Like, even I feel like when Harley broke out, it wasn't like a song, but the instrumentals behind it were just really good. Yeah. Or no, there was a there was It was song. the song Breakout, you know? I'll break out. You know, no, it wasn't. <laughs> that would be the other one. That's what it would have been, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it was like it was like a Spanish ballad or some shit like that. It right, was like very yeah. good. They were in like Argentina, right? Is that what this is supposed yeah. to be? It was. They said it was off the coast of South Africa, which no, I found incorrect. They said South America. Yeah, it's definitely South America. But are you I, sure they didn't say South Africa? How would that I mean, make any sense? That's what, oh, you know what, Diggins? Because my thing was cut off. It was like the part <laughs> yeah, where it said uh, America. It was like Africa. So mm-hmm. that's why the I part where they were speaking that. Spanish the whole movie was just like totally missing. Well, that actually threw me off because I couldn't read it. So that was fucking great. That's true. Uh, I I think I mean I think the thing about the music that I like besides that it was like you know place appropriate in terms of like like you were saying there was a little bit of potentially um spanish ballads or whatever was that i i think the suicide squad like i was saying it came out in the like late 70s early 80s or whatever the original run i think the music here was like 70s 80s music or like 70s 80s style rock as a way to Mm. set this in that time frame to make it feel more authentic um, and that makes sense, I yeah. think that really worked. Uh, so yeah, I like that. Let's talk about the, uh, what did you call them? The army people? Uh, oh, the, the, the freedom fighters. Yeah. There was a name you Sol-Soria. used. Salsoria. Oh, okay. Well, that was the name of the, the lady. Her name was Salsoria. Yeah. Right? Oh, I guess you, did you say Salteritas or uh, Salsoritas or something? I said the, it's like Salsoria's merry band of freedom oh, okay. fighters. Yeah. I said Salsoria camp was the, like, first ah, I gotcha. Said. Yeah. So, yeah, that scene. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about that scene. It's a fucking phenomenal scene. Had a dick in it. Pretty good. <laughs> uh, I just can't get over that, that he was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's put a, let's put a dick in. Like, it didn't I matter. I mean, definitely a prosthetic, right? It's, de- like, definitely a prosthetic. <sighs> TJ, I, I don't know, man. I I feel like if you're, if I'm me, if I'm in that movie, and James Gunn's like, we're going to have you stand up, get shot, and you're not going to be wearing any pants, we're we're going for it. There's no prosthetics involved. I'm, you know, it's a. Have you ever seen the um, RoboCop sketch with the him shooting the dicks off a million people? I don't think so. You know, prosthetics. It's pretty What's funny. It from uh, I forget. It's like a some online sketch where it's like the scene from RoboCop where like the woman is like getting assaulted by some guy in an alleyway and his dicks out and then RoboCop shoots his dick off and then just like. Of he's f- like he turns his head and then someone else is doing that and shoots that guy's dick off and it's like um <laughs> it's just a, a four minutes of prosthetic penises all getting exploded it's it's so funny um but yeah I don't know he because he didn't get shot in the dick right or did he uh did he I don't, I don't think, so. think so I honestly cannot remember so I don't know could be the real thing good for him. Not good for him, I guess, I, but I th- I think the the uh, one thing about that scene where and th- this might be like my only nitpick for the movie where it's like you killed all my fucking men, typical Americans. Ah, we're cool. We'll we'll help each other out. Like what what are we doing, man? That's like kind of insane. I mean, what are her right. options at that point? She probably, okay. she, yeah, enemy, she like, my enemy. Is that really what we're going with? She like literally says like I would team up with literally Satan if it would help yeah. us. So I guess I well, gotta live with this. Also, it's like, you killed all my men, so you're better than them at being killers. So I guess you guys will probably... Like, I want the guy who could shoot exploding polka dots instead of my guy who doesn't wear pants around. <laughs> like, he's, like, sleeping in the in the camp. Fuck that guy. Get your, get your pants. Like, yeah, I want the... I'll trade all my guys for the human shark man that can't be shot with bullets. <laughs> yes, please. Uh... I like that scene. I liked when they were exploding people with, like, fans and stuff. That was fun. 
when you're like trying to yeah, set up was... like hitman scenes. That was good. We should talk about the club scene. Let's talk week. about the club scene. They go to a club to find Peter Capaldi. We haven't talked about it at all. He's in this. Yeah, to find I Paddington's own Paddington's <laughs> friend, enemy, but enemy turned friend, enemy turned like associate, um, friend Peter of me? Capaldi. Yeah, like I don't know, remember exactly what their relationship was like, but I think at the end of the second one, he's like, I don't hate Paddington as much as I used to. But was he in the like line of people who was welcoming him to Aunt Lucy, or did he show up that day and they were like, "You're not in the fucking line." I was like, "All right, <laughs> I don't home. remember." Yeah, um, but yeah, Peter Capaldi, the thinker, I forget his name, Clifford DeVoe, uh, who Graves. is a really shitty Flash villain, but not shitty. He's kind of cool, but he's kind of weird. Um, he's just really smart, and it turns out he's been doing like mad science in Corto Maltese on the big giant starfish. It's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the deal with like? So he's he's teamed up with the evil government. Yes, mm-hmm. but like, have they kidnapped him, or is he just like, yeah, I'm down with evil governments? It seems well, he fair. He went there to do experiments. I think he was part right, of the package deal by which they initially received Starro. Yeah, I think that's oh, true. I see, I see. And I think he's, I mean, he's like a mad scientist, so he's just like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'll, I don't give a shit. I th- and yeah. I think he was probably also like, well, if I want test subjects, I, I will work with a oppressive regime of, like, people who will give me test subjects, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense. I wouldn't say he seems like a man who has a lot of moral compunctions. Yeah, exactly. What a great word, Diggins. That is a... That's man, a he right is a there. man. Oh, you were saying compunctions. <laughs> I was gonna say, this is good. No, no, he man. was saying yeah, more. I really hear that one. Ah, <laughs> I liked. Um, um, I liked his weird head. Yeah, they never explained it, which I guess is fine. Like they, you don't have to explain kind of, every weird. They're thing. like the the weird stuff in your head make you think better. And he's like, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I also like that he just walks around town like that. Like, he doesn't have guards or anyone, and no one asks him about it. I'm sure they all already have, because he's been there for 30 years or whatever. But, like, he's just, like, going to the bar, you know? It's funny. Yeah, like, that's his fucking bag, yeah. Yeah. I like, in the very brief flashback, when we see him from 30 years ago, he has fewer of them. Yeah, (laughs) that was really funny. And I saw concept art of that. They actually, the concept art had, like, about that many things, but even fewer. So, like, I like that there was a guy on... In the makeup booth was like, let's give him more things. Give him so yeah. many things. Um, and, uh, yeah, and he's bad. He's a bad guy. So they go to a club. Yeah. Because they they're, they're, they they want to go kidnap him. And uh, there was no dancing Zemo. I was very upset. I don't care that it's a Marvel thing. I want all my club scenes now to have dancing Baron Zemo. Mm. Yeah, so. but unlike that club scene, this one was good. Yeah, and it made any sense <laughs> at all. Wow. Yeah, it advanced the story at all. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't just like... Oh, memes for the memes. Although, they're probably going to get some good uh, memes out of it. I don't know. John yeah. Cena. One hour of Polka Dot Man dancing, please. Ball. Yeah. Uh, one uh, hour of, of John Cena scene? failing to dance. I don't know about that. He's succeeding in my book. <laughs> yeah, I agree with I agree with Nando. Plenty good dance for them. He was Cena. blending in with those pants. He can't do cool dancing in those pants. That's too suspicious. He has to do <laughs> dad dancing. Uh, yeah, what did you think of that scene, DJ? Uh, yeah, no, I, I thought it was very good. Um, I did find it interesting where it's like the, you know, you have a team of like renegades um, and it's like, yeah, we're in a club. We're just going to get fucked up together. Yeah. Um, and like it's it's I think it's like a theme throughout the whole movie, but like it never took itself like too seriously. Like I was it John Cena who's like, hey, don't forget the rat. Yeah. When like referencing, um, you know, like give him some fucking booze. Mm-hmm. So like, I yeah, I just thought that was like really good. I did hear from. Argentinians or whatever that that yeah. alcohol that they drink they drink it way too fast like you would not whatever oh, really? it is you would not drink it that quickly um I I imagine it's on the same level as like a malort or something like that I don't know but it's uh interesting yeah I I do like yeah I like that Idris was like I'm not gonna drink and then he gets drunk that's very that's very fun yeah yeah I like that Rick course, Flag right? wore a cowboy hat to the bar. <laughs> like, he was like, this is good. <laughs> and everyone's like, I guess. Uh, I like Rick Flag yellow shirt. That was my favorite. Speaking of upgrades, like, he always has the yellow shirt in the comics, and it really makes him look like less of an idiot and more of like a guy who's kind of also here for a reason, you know? Yeah, yeah. Who was the best dancer in the group? I know the three of them. Was it Ratcatcher 2? 
She was vibing. Dance. I mean, Polka Dot Man was surrounded by women, but yeah, Polka that's Dot, true. Polka Dot Man was breaking it down, from what I remember. Yeah, he was having a vibe or having a time. Apparently, that yeah. scene has a still from uh, Toxic Avenger in it, the first, oh, really? yeah, the most famous trauma movie, which is interesting because I knew that there were post credit scenes. Like I knew there were two. And the first one yeah. we saw with like the weasel. And then the second one we hadn't seen yet. We got to go through the whole credits, and at the end, it's like, I "Thank you, James." There, th- like, special thanks to the Toxic Avenger. I'm like, "Holy shit!" Is he the post credit scene? That's so cool. He's in this now. Like, that's a weird, you know. But but it wasn't. Um, but we did get yeah. Mantis's own Mantis. The, yeah, that's true. She was the singer. That's interesting. But apparently, she's part of like. The, the James Gunn tour bus with like Nathan Fillion <laughs> and Michael Rooker who just go from movie to movie now. It's driven by his brother Sean, and yeah, good for him. Is this is yeah. his brother Sean Milton? <laughs> no, no. Although Milton, so I like the Milton gag. I do think plastic bags from the grocery store for bombs is a recipe for disaster. <laughs> like, <laughs> um. Like I feel like Idris Elba would have been like, hold on, I want to take one of my little chess pieces off and turn it into a good bag. This will not explode. I really like the uh, Milton joke callback at the end. Mm-hmm. That was a good callback. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I like that this Harley Quinn is both like more or less together and competent when it comes to fighting and stuff, but also she's still pretty loony uh, in, in general. Like, I thought that was fun. Uh... What else? I don't know. What you think of the Peacemaker Flag bit business where Flag decides to be good guy and then Peacemaker decides to be bad guy? It was sad that Flag died, but the fight's like awesome. Yeah, fight's yeah. real good. Um, the one part when it's like in the helmet, I was like, this is awesome. The reflection of the helmet was the fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. I was watching There's this... a lot of good like cinematography in this movie. I was watching that fight. I was like, I can't believe I care about Rick Flag. <laughs> yeah and i was like there's a part of me that was like well the peacemaker show is going to be a prequel or at least that's what they said and I, i'm not sure if it still is um like yeah i, I think I they said that just to trick us exactly yeah so i was like oh maybe he's gonna kill him but then i'm like nah rick flag's probably gonna die he had his moment and this was it um they, the smaller uh the smaller bullet thing was brilliant that was cute yeah, there's a lot of cohesion in this movie, which, which I, I think, like, even for, like, literally any movie we've talked about, just the amount of work that went in to make this good was very nice. Um, yeah, you know what it is? It's a good script. It's a script written by one person <laughs> who goes, I'm going to have her talk about the spear here, and then at the end of the movie, she's going to use a javelin, and it's going to be a thing. And, like... I'm sure that exists in some of the scripts for, like, Snake Eyes or whatever. But then, by draft 80 and, you know, Collaborator 6, it becomes just a mess. And it's like, yeah, well, now it yeah. doesn't work anymore. Like, you lost all those things. But, like, yeah, having, yeah, all of the all of the bits, all of the call forwards and callbacks, like, they all worked because of a good script, which is important. I agree. Yeah. Um... What do we think of uh, Starro? I was Starro. I love my big uh, dumb starfish. Yeah, it was good. I and like I said, I think it's amazing that they made me feel bad for the goddamn starfish. Um, I I'm torn because it was like a really good fight, and the fact that you know it just kind of ends with it being consumed by rats. <laughs> like horrifying. I guess this might as well happen. Yeah, and like how the rats were like a big part of it, and they were like in his uh, eyeball with like eating yeah. his little cornea and stuff. That was oh. wild. So and good. Like it, the savagery was like amazing, and I'm like, man, Ratcatcher Two is the most powerful <laughs> yeah. ever, ever. Like this is insane. She might be able to fuck up Superman in the right setting. Well, yeah, I feel like she's got that Squirrel Girl vibe of like mm-hmm. she could kill Thanos if she wants to, but yeah, you need to have a lot of squirrels. Like, she's not going to be really <laughs> yeah. useful in space, but, like, in Central Park, she's very good. You guys um, ever ever see that meme that was, like, a, a bunch of different groups of animals? And it's, like, pick two, and the rest are oh, coming yeah. to kill you. The two you pick and yeah. defend you, the rest are coming to kill you. What do you pick? One of the options is 10,000 rats, and the only reason not to pick it is pride. Because 10,000 <laughs> rats can defend you from anything. 
Yeah, a giant not, starfish. Not a lion. I think it was like three lions were in that thing. Oh, my 10, God. Rats DJ, do rats. you know how many rats is 10,000 rats? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like 10,000 rats could at least, like, overwhelm the lion, and I could, like, punch it to death or something. <laughs> like, we, the, me the and the rats lion working together would, would be sweet. drown in rats. Yeah. <laughs> But, like, your rats are getting dusted so fast. And that's the thing Starro. I didn't think Starro put up a good enough fight. If Starro, like, pancaked or, like, starfished, um, probably would have taken out a lot of rats in the process. I mean... I was also ready for Sebastian to die. I can't I was so I, upset about that, but then he didn't, so it was cool. In fact, he had a fun little thing where he slid down the eye. Did you guys... Yeah! Catch that? Was like, hey, he's having fun. Everybody's having fun here. Uh, I, I'm with Starro, and I made a video about this. It will, will be out whenever it is probably tomorrow so when you're listening to this probably like today or yesterday or whatever uh i i think it's a little weird that we used starro and we didn't do any mind controlling in a way that was interesting like yeah it's true i feel like we could have had a character like rick flag who is dead and then come back and it's like oh fuck we gotta kill rick flag because that's what the stories always are in the comics like he is he essentially makes zombies and that's fun so it's kind of a bummer that we didn't do that um but whatever it's fine (laughs) It's. I think the Starro bit is the least interesting part of the movie for me. I like the part where they're killing army guys and stuff and fighting each other. Yeah, it's fair. Like, yeah. But, I mean... Given enough time, Superman would have came, right? I mean, but that's the thing. And that's why I feel like that Starro's so fun is then Superman becomes a liability or whatever. Like, you, oh, you start throwing good superheroes at him and then he can get them and then it's worse. Like, so... I'm not saying the Suicide Squad is better because he just like ignores them, um, right? Which is probably part of it, like which should be part of it. Where he like you could have a guy like a Starro be like, "Ugh, I'm not gonna even control these losers." One of them's like big old shark, but like also you're controlling random dudes in the street, so like you, you should probably, but like you know that's like kind of the lesson of the movie or or whatever when it's like. Everything has purpose, just like rats. But yeah, I don't. I don't think Sorrow completely ignored them for that reason. I honestly just think Sorrow was like, I don't know. So, I think they just defended themselves, and then he just stopped putting out little Sorrows and was like, "This is enough, people." They, yeah, right. They covered their face like once, and then were like, "Oh, I'll take these off." Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, man, if they're covering their face, those are the guys you want to get. Like, they they know what's up. Yeah, right. Also, one of them's a big shark that you can't control. So, like, you probably said your guys. Like, I guess with Starro, it's like, if you have an army of goons, then Starro makes the goons, and then he sends them after you. Like, that's how Starro works. Right. But instead, the goons just leave. They, like, tell him, like, we're in charge of the city. Bye. And (laughs) it only almost works because Waller's like, he is in charge of the city. And then, you know. Well, they are the ones who freed him. So maybe he was like, oh, these guys are cool. That's true. It felt like apathy more than anything else. Yeah. You just want to get to the tower, like the center of town. Like go climb up a big building or whatever. Joke's on, um, joke's on Sara, though. It's the things that were his undoing. Exactly. The big fucking idiot. Uh, what else? What else was How about that c- fun? I was going to say that CGI for the little starfish. My God. Yeah, it was brutal. Especially like, the bits when we saw flashbacks and it like ate up a whole guy's face. I was, yeah. That was like one of the, that was very gruesome. Um, Apparently, Starro yeah, predates very, very the face huggers from. Really? Yeah, Starro's like the he's, first Justice League villain. I was um, going to say, he's like the first big villain Justice League fought. So he's from like yeah. the, they, 60s. And the, at the that was, yeah, that How was the back, back, back in the him? day. How'd they fucking beat him? I don't know. They punched him a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Well, so I think when Starro showed up the first time, he didn't do mind control. It wasn't until oh, I see. the 80s or whatever. But in the, in, I want to say in his first appearance, he was just like a big old starfish. But there's like a story... I can't remember when it came out, but yeah, there's one where he does starts taking over Justice League members. I can't remember how they beat him then, but something like that. I don't know. I kind of mentioned this in the video. Have you either guys see the Batman Beyond episode that he's in? It's the one I have not. No. You ever watch that show? No. Well, yes, but if I have seen that episode, I just like do not remember. Diggins, were you a no as well? Uh, yeah. I mean, I watched Batman Beyond as a kid, but like DJ, I really don't remember most of it. It's a good one. It's the one. It's like the. It's the one where Batman Beyond gets invited to join the Justice League and Superman's like something's up and I don't know what it is. And it turns out Superman uh, is Star-Road, uh, but Star-Road oh, can like shit. control you from your body. 
and he's just like fucking shit up, try to get them out of the way. So like it's fun. I like I like a good Starro um, story, but yeah, it totally makes sense. But yeah, um, what else was cool. I don't know. It was good. Yeah, I just, I, that, I'm trying to get to like the the fight. Mm-hmm. They I thought the movie very well handled the fact we're going to tell you the people that matter and what their deal is. And we're going to breeze by some other stuff. And it was like the perfect balance. Yeah. Like they picked their spots. They were intelligent. And it, I'm with Diggins. Like it, even someone for like, so Marvel's done the thing now where everything matters. Like, you know, I, I don't know if like, what if will prove to matter, but oh, it's going to matter. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they make everything feel like it matters. And that's like cool. Cause it's such a singular, unique thing that the MCU has done, but it's kind of cool that like, DCE, you could throw out like a Shazam and a you know um, Suicide Squad, and you know here it is, take it for what it's worth, and move on. You don't need to invest in any heavy way. Yeah, and I kind of like that. Yeah, I think Marvel's gonna do that eventually. I I don't know about the investing, but definitely the creator driven projects. But they still haven't quite cracked it. I mean, James yeah. Gunn obviously is is as close as they've gotten, and I guess like Joss Whedon, there you felt, and and John Ooh. Favreau. Yeah, exactly. Like also, who or is he cool? No, Jeff Favreau's cool, don't know. right? Oh, okay, good. <laughs> right. As far as, as we now, know, yeah. It is. What time is it? Eight thirty-two, <laughs> Wednesday, the eleventh, East Coast time. Um, he, but yeah, there's there's like some directors and like Kenneth Branagh Thor one. You were like, this is a movie, and I guess Taika Waititi Thor Ragnarok. They're getting there in terms of like directorial sure. vision. Eternals is going to be the real proving ground. To say, that's, yeah, that's, that's the test be for me. Test. How yeah, different they need are Cap- they going to let these movies be? Yeah, and I guess we got Sam Raimi's Doctor Strange, so that'll be interesting too. Um, because I don't know, I think they get that they got to do something. Um, but also, do they though? Like, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm they actually don't. Cu- so while I agree that Eternals is like the proving ground, I'm curious if Shang's Chi is going to like take any like swings and not just evolve into the well we've pre-planned the fight scenes like i'm sure the last fight scene is going to be exactly like as sky beamy as possible um also shout out to no sky beams in this movie um but i'm curious if everything else around shang chi will be like interesting and you know a little bit sandboxy with like let's make a kung fu movie and see how that looks i mean um, they better pre-plan those fight scenes that's that's exactly what i want i feel like you could write a shang chi movie and just Start with the fight scenes and then work. Well, that's backwards. how every Marvel movie's written. Exactly, but with the Kung Fu movie, it's like I want good fight scenes. That's, that's fair. Like I don't want this, you know, Black Widow flippy dippy karate, you know, kind of thing. I want like yeah. some really choreographed fancy shit. Do you know apparently in Guardians the way that James Gunn got around like having to do that for everything like pre-planned CGI fight scenes in a studio was for the prison breakout scene. He's like, well, this is like part of the story. Like they're breaking out of the prison. So I need some like actual hand to hand fisty fights and stuff like that. And that's how he got like Kevin Feige be like, fine, I guess. Hmm. I guess you could do like some actual non CGI fight whatever's. But I don't like it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You kids. I don't know. I think. Yeah. I feel like the DC, I think the thing with the Marvel and Suicide Squad stuff, and honestly what Suicide Squad could use is like, the the tough part about Suicide Squad is like, and we haven't talked about it that much, but like it didn't make a bazillion dollars and there's a million reasons why. But like the way Marvel gets around that is just like, well, yeah, I mean, if you don't watch Ant-Man, you're not going to know what this thing is later. So it's like Suicide Squad has that disposability, which is nice, but also... If at one point someone just picked up, like, I don't know, a, what would it even be? A mother box. Then you'd be like, oh, now I care because I am. I mean, I don't know. Warner Brothers fans are the worst. Not the worst, but <laughs> they are. <laughs> wow. Not Okay. Warner Brothers fans are not the worst. The worst fans are Warner Brothers fans. You all know right, what I mean? Fair. Like, yeah, yeah, not all Warner Brothers fans are the worst, but all the worst. But like, all the worst fans yeah, are Warner Brothers fans. Because it's always yeah, like, it's we're fair. boycotting this one and not this one because this actor said this thing. And it's just like, do you guys even like these? Which ones are you cool with at this point? It never ends. Some of them are cool. Whoever's listening to the podcast, you guys are probably cool. Everybody else, yeah, so? you're not like you're not the bad ones. Weirdos. <laughs> Did you put hashtag release the Snyder Cut in your bio? Yeah, the, That's how you know. The worst are you an associate Earth- producer? Are mostly <laughs> nitpicking fans. You guys are all horrible, yes. and we hate you. <laughs> yeah, we're wow. negging our audience. That usually works. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. 
Any characters you'd like to see in a Tuicide Squad? I mean, if they are, they'll um, probably die, so no. But, but like, any weird yeah, characters right. that you've always been like, that would be fun, or like, that guy. See, oh, you know, I don't know oh, those characters. Oh. That's, like, the problem. You know who I want in Tuicide Squad? I don't Tuicide know Squad? Microface. Who? Who? I want Catman, baby. Ooh, yeah. Catman is fun. Catman. Or Man Bat. I don't know if he ever does it. Probably not, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't... See, the thing is, like, Polka Dot Man, I'm pretty sure, has not been in Suicide Squad. I'm pretty sure James Gunn was just like, this guy's funny. Let's put him in. So, you can pick any character. Um, I think you could probably... I, I would like Kite Man. He's my one. I think you could get him. Like, I almost think he might be too high profile yeah. now. With the Harley yeah, Quinn Yeah, no, show. he's got too much heat. Yeah, you yeah. want someone with even less heat than that. Um, hmm, who's a really weird one? He couldn't be in a Suicide Squad movie because he's not a villain. But you know who I would love to see in one of these DC movies? Who? Oh. Detective Chimp. Ooh, yeah. I mean, Katana wasn't a villain either. Maybe he's the new... Maybe Detective Chimp is the new Rick Flag or something. I don't know. What? That might. Oh my god, that would be a problem. I mean, they could he could be the bad guy for sure. That'd be fun. You can have like a fan of the yeah. of the Suicide Squad be the villain of the Suicide Squad. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like really weird DC villains. I'm trying to think of like some that aren't Batman villains, because there's lots of Batman villains. Um I like uh like a Flash Flash has great villains. Um uh, oh you know what? Toy well, Man? Mm, Toy Man's not bad. Toy Man's pretty good. I see the thing with Superman villains for me is like we don't have a lot. We got a lot like Toy Man is one of like five terrestrial Superman villains who I like. Yeah. So I I do want to like protect them all. Like no Reactron, no like a lightning, whatever her name is. Um I, I would love like there's a guy called Rainbow Raider who like uses rainbows. To fight the Flash, he's pretty good. Um, it's a character called Abracadabra who fights the Flash with magic. He's pretty fun. Um, I would like to see a magical character in the next one because I think those like are fun. Enchantress. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, That's who Nando wants. I like. I, I I feel like actually what I want is I want James Gunn to make that Justice League Dark movie that they keep threatening us with because uh, those characters are equally shitty. Like, in the same way that, like, these guys are all bad people. And, like, I think Detective Chimp could fit in there easily. Um, and then there's, like, a little bit of, like, you know, Constantine's got a bit of edge. Uh, you do whatever you want with Satana. You get Entrigan. Like, there's some there's some fun characters in there. So, that would be nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was all I don't know, wonderful guys, stuff. No, I mean, like, I, I, yeah, I like yeah. this movie. I hope it gets more movies or it leads to other good things like it i guess it's more of it like they're getting guardians 3 but after that i don't know what james gunn's slate looks like although he did say he's got another dc thing planned so i thought he said he was like open to whatever maybe it's like set in stone yeah that's that's fair i could see him making like a booster gold movie or something like pick one oh, character that'd be so good. that's yeah, a real that'd shithead be cool. and make their movie um yeah so that could be fun yeah, uh, I would say um, to our listeners, if you have not seen this movie, go see this movie. Like, yeah. and go in theaters, support the whatever. Except Delta, I know. Yeah, so you're, if you're not comfortable, it's fine. Yeah, but, if I you're if you're worried about the virus, we understand. Please don't put yourself at risk for a movie. It's on HBO Max. Also, definitely watch the movie in full, one hundred percent, not extra view of like you can't. Yeah, <laughs> don't miss all that fun <laughs> stuff that's in the bottom and top of the screen. <laughs> That's very important. Waller's head. The do you, the. do you think it's because the aspect ratio on this was also a little weird? Because the aspect ratio was like set for TV. You think that's why I cut was, the top off? Wasn't it meant for like IMAX or some shit? I thought. Well, that's fair. It was meant for IMAX, but it's like that more square, less rectangular, uh, which I know doesn't make any sense. But you know what I mean. Like how the like, Snyder cut was set was presented in glorious uh, <laughs> four by three. Oh, four to by preserve three. the director's uh. vision. Yeah. Uh, but like, I wonder if that's what it was. It's like the the studio went, or like the theater was like, do it like sixteen nine. But really, they should have done three four. I don't know, or four three or whatever. Uh, do you guys want to get to our classic segment? Yeah, I I'd love fucking that. love to. Let's fucking recommend something to those. Fuckers. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, that would be dope as fuck. Did Mando. any ghost ever come out and say, "I got a ghost dick"? <laughs> you guys haven't. Diggins has seen. I think you should leave. DJ is not. Although, that might have been the first not. episode of season two. Just say all the jokes that I don't know. That was yeah. the first episode of season two. Yeah, so you may remember that. Um, all right, DJ, what do you got to recommend to the fine people? 
All right. Um, so I did mention I saw Luca, and it's amazing, and I loved it so much, and I thought it was so great, and everyone should absolutely watch Luca if they can. Um, another thing. So I got two wrecks primarily. Wreck number one. There is a documentary series on Netflix called Untold. <gasps> yeah. And the premise is like they're doing five sports stories that are like these – I don't want to say obscure, but probably like lesser documented, at least publicly, um, stories. Yeah, like I think if, it, if the pitch is like – if you kind of heard about it. You heard a little bit. Yeah. Because I, I also but, wa- watched this, and this was going to be one of my ranks as well. Um, okay. Do you want me to, like, totally save it? Cause I no, do no. Go things, for it. So. Yeah, I have other stuff. Okay. Too. So uh, the first one covers the mouse in the palace, which is about a, a – D- Dickens, have you heard of the mouse in the palace? I don't think so. So it's a, it was a fight in 2004 between the Indiana Pacers and the um, Detroit Pistons at the Palace at Auburn Hills. So that's why it was called the mouse in the palace. And it's basically the last NBA fight period. Um, long story short, there was a fight that broke out between one of the NBA players and Ron Artest's, uh, really several of the NBA players, and the fans in the stands. And it was this whole big controversy, and it kind of changed the NBA and these players' careers forever. Um, but, yeah, it's you never really heard the player side before. It was always, like, and. I'm using the dog whistly language that is used or was used at the time, but it's like these thugs with their hip hop culture going up and beating the innocent fan who just so happened to instigate the fight. But these fans were innocent, basically, um, even though they totally instigated the fight um, and kind of goes back and evaluates like what happened. Like, let's deep dive this. Let's talk about what actually happened. And it's very, very good. I'm sure the other stories will be great. Um, But yeah, um, obviously like, uh, so they're releasing one a week for the next five weeks. Um, obviously can't speak to the other ones yet, but I would absolutely recommend the Mouse in the Palace one. I thought it was very um, expertly done. Um, like, really good deep dive I- I- into what happened there. And just a lot of things I didn't know, and I, I just don't think were known, period. So it was really great to see those things. Um, Do we know what the other ones are going to be about? One is about Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, good. Uh, Someone I always was, wanted to know more about. <laughs> while she was... <laughs> Bruce Jenner uh, and like kind of her career and stuff like that. Another is about this uh, amateur hockey league that was run by the mafia. Oh, now that's the good stuff. Then there's another about a female boxer whose coach like had psychologically tormented her and uh, forced her to be her slave, basically. What? Um, no, I, like I'm dead serious. It's it's like really very close Who to what it was gives about. A shit about Caitlyn Jenner. Let's talk about this I, more. <laughs> like, and I honestly can't remember the last one, and it's bothering me that I can't remember. But I'm, still, I'm sure it's very, very interesting about what it's about. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, very exciting. Uh, you, you said um, you had something else? I do. Real quick. I'm so late to the game on this, but I finally played Final Fantasy VII Intergrade with Yuffie and Boy. Um, very good. Very fun. I'm so um, mad I don't have a PS5. I know it's it's truly an elitist game because you can only have it if you have a PS5. Um, I would say that it's good, but because the next Final Fantasy VII whatever probably isn't coming out for six or seven years, you just wait. Like no rush. I I don't know why I opted to play it now. I was just like, oh, I never played this, and now I'm like back in. I might replay regular Final Fantasy VII remake just because I loved it so much, and you know, just uh, yeah. I like it. I don't know. I recommend it. If you have a PS5, if you don't have a PS5, it's like totally fine. Don't sweat it. Uh, yeah. Cool. So yeah, that's all I got. Dickens, um, what about you? Uh, yeah, I watched a TV show from 2017 this past week that I very much enjoyed. Now, everyone who has recommended this show to me in the past has been suckered because this show frames itself as being a particular thing. Which is not true. It's part of just, like, the show that it's presenting itself this way. And I don't know why everyone I know who has wrecked this show believed it. Because it's obviously fake. Uh, Whoa. What is this? uh, The show is called Comrade Detective. Uh, it's It's on Amazon Prime. And it presents itself as being... Like a lost uh, propaganda show made by communist Romania in the 80s. Uh, that they have like recently rediscovered and dubbed over with American actors. Uh, 
It is not that. It is a thing that was made in 2017. Uh, but it was made with, they like wrote the whole script and then had it made in Romania with Romanian actors speaking Romanian and then took that footage and dubbed over it with American actors to really give it that feel of being some like old piece of garbage. Uh, but Love that. It's, uh, it's made to kind of make fun of old like, 80s like propagandistic american movies like red dawn and rocky four that are all like rah rah beat the soviet union kind of stuff uh by being that from the other side where it's like this really heavy-handed uh communist propaganda nice. where people people will say things like uh uh this was an inside do you think this was an inside job of course not. Everyone knows that there are no corrupt police officers in Romania. <laughs> or, of course he's going to pull through. He's being taken care of by the best healthcare system in the world. Ha! Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also, so it's a buddy cop, like, murder mystery kind of show where one guy's partner gets killed at the start by a drug dealer wearing a Reagan Halloween mask. Uh... And then he teams up with that with his dead partner's old friend uh, to try and unravel the smuggling ring that's bringing in such horrors as uh, Monopoly board games and uh, Jordash jeans into Romania. <laughs> uh, and it's actually like a really good like old buddy cop show that just has these jokes about <laughs> um, Romania, uh, Romanian propaganda in it. So it, like, it's, it's really funny on that one level. And then it also just really works as, like, a buddy cop show on the other level, which I appreciate that they actually made that part of it real. Uh, and the the it's, like, the main characters are dubbed over by Channing Tatum and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, <laughs> and then there's, like, uh, like the one of the two, uh, like, asshole detectives who just make fun of them is uh, Jason Manzukis, Nick Offerman's the police captain... It's they get they get a lot of really good people in on this one. Daniel Craig is like a crazy priest at one point and doing just a demented accent. I love it. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's called Comrade Detective. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, if any of that appeals to you, uh, I highly recommend it. It's very fun. Cool. Um, where am I? I guess I can wreck. I, I've, I've watched a couple things, many of which I, I would say I'm like lukewarm to. Like that's pretty good. Um, I watched the first episode of What If. I don't mind. I like it. I think it's got flaws that are good, obvious to people that watch it. Mostly that it feels like like a kind of I don't know the the timing's a little weird, but mostly because it just feels like a tour of Captain America one, but with Peggy Carter, which is interesting. But I kind of wish it was a little bit more focused. Um, it, but yeah, the action's great, and I think it's pretty cool. I'm interested to see like by episode three what we're doing. Um, let's see. I. Oh, okay. Well, I, oh, all right. So I watched F boy Island. I don't hate it as much yeah. as I think I tweeted because I watched, I th- thought that after episode four, I think it's just, I think you get a little bit more personality out of the guys, but I do think that the whole F boy thing doesn't matter. And I think that all of the guys on it are pretty awful. Some are a little bit less awful. The women are, some are, I think one is pretty bad at at just being a person and stuff. The other two are, like, fine. I would say there's just, like, a lack of a character that I find really interesting. And also, I just, six episodes in, I still don't understand what the show is. I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know if any of them actually want love or whatever. Which is kind of interesting, I guess. But, yeah. Um, like... There's stuff that's set up that we just have not had payoff for yet, and it's really weird. Um, I think it's coming. I, I it really better think be. It's coming. But so watch that. Uh, I also watched. Um, uh, I finished the the Blood Red Sky movie, which, like I said, don't hear anything about it. Just watch it. It's cool. Um, still watching a lot of Curb. I watched in you know not even like in morning, but just like in because they were all recommended again. The some old whitest kids you know sketches because Trevor Moore died uh, from something, uh, and uh, those sketches most of them pretty funny. Uh, I'd say they hold up. I like the one where they sell crack, uh, or like where the CIA gives crack to a, 
a black man in the 80s. That one's pretty funny. Um, if you want just like a really solid, just like this is a good sketch. And uh, so, yeah, I've been watching like reruns of that show. But yeah, I mean, besides Suicide Squad and that thing TJ recommended has not been too much. But like I've watched Suicide Squad like twice because I think it's very good. So that is fun. Uh, what are we doing next week? Is it Free Guy? It's Free Guy. Free Guy. The real question is, what are we doing after Free Guy? Free Guy? Free Guy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Does something else come out? I don't think so. Unless you want no, to see no, no. Paw Patrol the movie. Which, what movie? Yeah, hell yeah, Paw, I do. Or oh. Paw Patrol the movie, or The Protégé, or Reminiscence. Or Candyman, or He's All That. Yeah, maybe not. Um, Protégé, no. Reminiscence, maybe. <laughs> that one's on HBO. So, oh, is it? Oh, that's compelling. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, so that helps. I think there's a Netflix thing coming out soon too, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, we also are like ten weeks behind on doing Spy Kids 3D. It'll, co- like it'll we- happen eventually. These yeah. we've never uh, been on time with these. I don't know what anybody <laughs> expected. Uh, isn't there something? There's something on Netflix that I saw a trailer for there. I was like, that looks great, and I want to watch it right now. What was we were it? Pretty Tom Lee with Crazy Stupid Love, I think. That's true. We were definitely yeah. less bad about that one. And we'll do the uh, an Eliminator pool soon. So uh, I'll have the I'll have it ready for next week. So um, yeah, Nanda, were you thinking of the Kissing Booth three? That was not <laughs> it. Although was that what you were very excited. I, I've heard of those. Don't breathe too. No, God, no. Um, I, I, the kids love those Kissing Booth movies. It's so weird. <laughs> like, I, I remember I saw the first trailer for this and went, what the, this is so nothing. But apparently, it is very, very popular. They've made three of them. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. They don't make three of that many movies. You know? But we got three of could them. It, um, could it be... Red Notice, starring Gal Gadot and The Rock. No. Uh, although, that might be cool. Let's see. I'm going to go trailers. Respect There's the, the Witcher Aretha Franklin show. Movie. That looks interesting. What'd you say, Diggins? Respect the Aretha Franklin movie, starring no. Jennifer Hudson, known, also starring known as Netflix movies. Uh, Grizabella from <laughs> Cats. My hero. Um, oh, it's obviously the John David Washington movie, Beckett. What does Beckett? I don't know, but it's a movie starring John David Washington that's coming to Netflix. Now that sounds pretty good. Uh, I don't honestly cannot remember. Oh, no, it's not the Midnight Mass show because I don't watch that. Um, maybe it's a show. Cobra Kai. Rascal does not to... dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. That sounds. That sounds wild. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm bad at this um, because I should have known what it was, but I don't remember what it is. DJ, did you watch the trailer for that Cape movie? Did we talk about this? Yes. Have you seen it? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Nice. Um, I'm I'm not going to get canceled, but I'm like super excited. You will absolutely get canceled, but that's fine. That's the price I'm willing to pay. Um, (laughs) That's fair. All right. Well, we will enjoy all of those things. I guess if, if anybody has suggestions on what you want in two weeks, definitely give us those. I have a good idea. We make a poll and then ignore yeah, the poll. Pick the lowest yes. picked thing. Well, that would that's be funny, funny, though. That's part of our contempt for our fans is we absolutely refuse to follow their advice. That's true. What if What if we did that? What if we made a poll? We're going to say it on the podcast now. So if you're listening to the podcast, you will know this. <laughs> we are going to pick the lowest thing on the poll. <laughs> I don't know how I people lo- can influence that because you can't, you know. You'd have to vote for other things. Exactly. To, like, fix and the And not balance. vote for this. Yeah. So, you do what you want. <laughs> Everybody has their options, but we will probably do, unless it's terrible, or something else better comes up, the lowest rank thing. And this is for two weeks, so we can talk about this more, but... Uh, yeah. Next week is definitely Free Guy. Yeah, Free Guy next week. So... Although, cool. we have to go to theaters for that one. You do. Uh, some hero should Just find throw on camera. your N95... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Have you guys seen the new Razor mask that's going to be coming out? The Razor Zephyr? Like, is oh it a God. Razor? Like, cut your face? No, Razor, no, like, like razor, the video like the... game peripherals company. Yes. Oh, oh Hold on. yeah. I did see that. It's got, like, silly RGB bullshit. <laughs> yeah. How much does it cost? They have not said yet. Pre-orders are open, though. They should probably tell are us. They? 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can pre-order it to just, you know, say that I didn't, you might want it. Oh, I didn't realize that. But, um, but yeah, it's it's very silly. I mean, it's a cool um, looking. Mask. I mean, I don't, maybe not silly, but like I don't know. It's like yeah. I mean, I've it looks heavy. It, it looks, looks really very heavy. heavy. Yeah, I've seen other masks. <laughs> like I said, I, and now that we're coming back, maybe I will buy a nice mask. But um, I've seen nice masks. Like um, oh god, uh, Oakley has a good mask. I think I might buy one of those. Um, Ooh, yeah, because like it's Ooh. forty bucks or something, which is more than I've paid for any mask so far. But like that's fair. That's not that much. Like I've spent forty dollars on masks, you know? Like it's just that right, yeah, I have spent it on shitty ones. But if I spent forty dollars on a nice, like good mask with good ventilation, I'll put it in the chat and you guys will be like, Wow, it's a cool looking mask and also seems like it's probably on the uh on the up and up. They have a follower count requirement. <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, good joke, Alex. Um, but yeah, like maybe a mask like this. I don't know. I, uh, I don't. I don't think, thank you, everyone who has gotten vaccinated uh, for, for <laughs> sparing me thinking about this. But now we're back, baby. Um, That's great. Yeah. So we will see. Um, until next week. Oh wait, anything to plug? Anybody have anything to plug? I. Uh- just the usuals. Check out Roses and Rejections on the Pop Break Network. Uh, we talked about the insane Bachelorette finale where uh, Katie Thurston, the Bachelorette, set a man's hair on fire in uh, on TV. What? So that was like fun. on purpose or by accident? N- like she, not not literally, but she tore into a human no. being with like the ferocity of what I assume would be of ten thousand rats. Um, oh my goodness. And it was like really hard to watch. It was very awkward. Um, it was uncomfortable. That's fun. Um, so check that out. And then we got Bachelor in Paradise coming this upcoming week. Uh, and we're still talking FBoy Island. So there's like no end to Bachelor stuff. It's like, it's it's been nonstop. <laughs> like, wild. Uh, I can't. Like, my Bachelor batteries are empty. But usually Bachelor in Paradise is like a good refresher. Um, you know what it is? It's like the Suicide Squad of dating shows. Because it's a bunch of random people who it doesn't matter if you know who they are or not. And you can just watch it and leave it alone and never pick it up ever again. Nice. Um, so that's one of the nice things about Bachelor in Paradise. It's like a one-off. You watch it and you're done. So, um, yeah, if anybody needs to be sold on it. But uh, that's it. Cool. Um, oh, I actually have one last plug. Whoa. Amazing. S- DJ, what do you got? Stay tuned to my social media at Zippy by Day. I... Where we, Michelle and I, might be doing a little mini Extra Life thing because they're having an August event oh. because uh, there's no end to COVID. Yeah. Uh, so we might do a little, like, 12-hour something board game, video game, maybe something. Um, maybe we'll take, maybe we'll play It Takes Two together and see how quickly one person could just give up on life. It's, um, uh, it's not as bad <laughs> as you would expect, but it is, it's, it's, you know. How quickly you get divorced. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Test. you know what? Me and Hannah are playing. We're playing the yarn game. Have you played that one? Where you're like two yarny? Bo- no. Well, I mean, uh, maybe that's what you guys call it in the house. I think it's like unraveled or something like that. It's like little little yarn. Oh, devil thingies. Yeah. Is I think Yarny's like the name of the guy, right? The main character's name Yarny. Oh, maybe. There's two. I'm playing the second one where there's two of them. Um, uh, okay. It's kind of fun. I think you, might, you guys might like it. I like remember the Ubisoft. E3 thing from probably like 2013 oh, where the yeah. guys came up and talked about the first one. It's like, this is Yarny. That's I'm so excited right. to talk about my Yarn game. I do remember I'm like, that this guy. Is t- this is just Yoshi's Yarn. Yeah. That's all this is. It is It is very much like that. I think the two-player one is probably a, got, got a little bit more to it um, okay. than the, the original. But yeah, it's a kind of fun game. I don't know. But yeah, stay tuned to my social media. Add to me by day. We might be doing a thing. And if we're definitely doing anything, I'll probably mention it next week. But uh, yeah, stay tuned, I guess. Diggins, you got anything to plug? Just my usuals. I have my newsletter, uh, a little perspective dot substack dot com. And I also stream at twitch.tv slash this is an odd name. I recently finished streaming a bunch of classic Sonic games. So I'll be getting back to Disco Elysium and... Maybe some new stuff too. Who knows? Nice. I um I haven't streamed in a little bit, like like a video game. Although I did do my Goose Game stream. I played Goose Game. You know what? I can recommend that. That game's fun. I hadn't played it, but I like it's it in, is fun. It's so short. It's like four hours long. It's great and cheap. Yeah, the thing twenty bucks maybe. Out, so. I think was what I paid. Uh, and short I'm sure and cheap, I, uh, just that, like Nando. 
Damn hey. right. Yeah, and yeah, Goose, just like Nando. Uh, I like that. Um, what else can I say? Uh, but also, just like Dickens, I have a newsletter now, too, because I wa- wanted to do one, but it's different. Um, it's I wanted to do a thing where I start trying to like write, do more writing that's not for videos, so I wanted to make a sub stack that I did make uh, about that so that I have pressure for the public to keep doing it um where i'm just gonna kind of give very vague updates and and be like this part's hard but not tell anybody what any of it is um but yeah so that's something that i'm doing i want to say the channel or whatever is called i think if like you go to like stubstack.com slash nando view movies that's it but the blog itself is called nando writes movies because I, i wanted to have different search names um but yeah, so so there's that. Videos. I have my Suicide Squad video coming out where I'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, it'll probably be out when this video comes up. Um, in fact, the Nebula Plus version of it, which is like the extended version on Nebula, has like a full <laughs> like 20 minute thing that I did for fun at the end where I did a tier list of all the characters from the Justice League Batman Begins ep- or Beyond episode uh, and whether they are shui or slagged uh, which is the the terminology that exists in that universe it is quite fun uh, but yeah all those things um, next week free guy cool yeah good stuff yeah. everybody until then I am at Nando V Movies on Twitter I'm at Zippy by Day I'm at this is an odd name Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Woohoo! Oh, we love you. Bye.